Hi there, and welcome to the very first episode of The Buzzing Out. My name is Kev Muldoon, and today I've got my good friend, Kevin Rooney. How are you doing, Kev? I'm good, Kev, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Um, I've, been trying to get, I've been trying to get this sorted for, trying to get this podcast arranged for about a couple of weeks, well, with you anyway, for a, a couple of weeks. So I appreciate you taking the time. No problem at all, yeah. It's good to finally get on here and, and get a wee chat with you. It's funny because um, people who, people who follow my blog, who follow me online, will know that I've been working online for a long time. But this, you're you're just getting into working online, aren't you? Yeah, well, I don't know so much working online, but certainly getting on to um, recreational use of the internet, if you like, um, in terms of a podcast and stuff um, based on baseball, basically, which is a hobby of mine. So, yeah. But is it safe to say though that you're how to put this nicely, you're a, you were a bit of a forum junkie. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, yeah. <laughs> I, think I, I think my post count in one certain football forum is about 105,000 at the moment. Are you kidding me? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's you, sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe, maybe I should start doing some work when I'm at work here, eh? <laughs> doing what I'm getting paid for. I, I, I mean, I, I've, I've been running discussion. well, I've, I've, only, I've got a few just now, but I started my first discussion forum in 2001, which was also a, a football forum, and that's unheard of. I mean, I think the most I've had, and I, I always posted more on, obviously, the forums which I ran, and I think the most I had was eight or 9,000. So that wow. 100,000 for someone else's forum is unheard of. I'm not the top poster on there, I have to say. There's a few guys above me, but... Um... Basically, there's actually a, a baseball thread on that, which I might touch on later when we come on to talk about um, the project and stuff that we worked on, but um, I think I've got 5,000 posts alone in that thread, That's a thread, a how thread long, which how has 18,000 posts in it. How many pages is that then? Because it's normally uh, what about, it depends on the settings, but say 10 posts per page. I'm just going to have a wee quick look, 453. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's bizarre. I can only imagine how much that costs to host. Yeah, I mean, it is a busy forum. It's probably the biggest, or one of the biggest um, fo football forums for sale tickets out there. And it is, I, I do spend a fair bit of time on it, but it's amazing. See, when you get into a discussion about certain things, it's amazing how your post count just flies up. And yeah. I do like to talk a lot, so yeah. The funny thing about discussion forums like that is it's quite, people are quite, I, I, I don't know if territorial is the right word, but they're, they're quite protective of the forum that they post, you know? Um, uh, it does, you do become a kind of, like, uh, it's like it being you, a, you, I you be, suppose it's been a become, club. You, yeah, like, effectively you become an ambassador for it. Yeah, you do. Don't get me wrong, it's not without its problems and it's not without its issues, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's the best forum out there or anything like that, but it, it's... I spend more time posting about non-Celtic stuff probably than I do about Celtic stuff, or maybe yeah. 50 50. I mean, there's, there's talk about all sorts on there. That's a good. It's a good community in that way that it's not just purely about football, and it's not run that way that you have to just talk about football. There's all sorts of discussions goes on on it, which makes it quite yeah. a, a, a easy to rack up higher post counts. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a member of one of the other Celtic forums and. I don't. I mean, I don't follow football. I, I did for a couple of years, but I'm, if football's on, I watch it. If a big game's on, I watch it. But I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm a fanatic like some of our other friends. Um, but it's funny because on on that forum, I do have a few few posts about about football. But most of my posts are about irrelevant stuff. I've even asked things like, "How do I pay my council tax for my house?" And people, people have a answered me. You know, it's it's bizarre. Do you know what? I don't. I hardly use Google now. I just go into I just go into Celtic Minded, which is a forum of MD's wondering. I go into Celtic Minded and just say, How do I do this? What do I need that? And see the see the advice that we've had off it. And there's a lot of people sort of inter forum wars that go on and say, Why would you post pay ten pounds a year to post on this forum? The amount of money I've saved is unbelievable because of the experts oh, on there I'd, and I'd pay more. I'd I'd pay more. If I, yeah. I if I had a good discussion for that a, a discussion forum that I went to all the time, I'd happily pay Couple of pounds, like five dollars a month or ten dollars a month. Yeah, That's I just it. hope the owner's not watching this in case he charges me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bump up your prices. 
it's amazing the advice and stuff that you can get off of there. I mean, I, I used to work in the car trade and I've helped a lot of people out in terms of car stuff and that kind of thing. But, I mean, you go in there, you get legal advice, you get all sorts of stuff. You know, when I was buying my house, I got a lot of advice from people on there who were involved in that type of thing. And it's it's people are giving you it's trustworthy advice a lot of the time because it's part of a community and people are doing it because they know they get stuff back from you and that kind of thing. So it's, it is a handy, it's a handy place. It's... Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You know, if you if you need to know something unusual, there's always somebody on there that knows <laughs> something about it. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, for the benefit of others, like we've we've how long have we known each other? Then would you say like, because you you you're actually I'm you're you're the year above me in high school. A school, a school year above you. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a full year older than you, but I'm a school year above you. Um, you, I don't your, know, birth, prob- your, birthday, your birthday was recently, wasn't it? Means of September 11th, believe it or not. All right, I'm July, so you're like ten months. Yeah, it's ten months. That's what I thought. It's um, yeah. I mean, I've probably about fourth or fifth year in high school. I kind of got to know you better. Yeah, so for for other people, that's probably what's what sixteen, sixteen or fifteen. But, uh, but fifteen, like, sixteen sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. No, in I'm fact, the, I, I think I probably met you before that. Yeah. Because maybe, maybe I probably met before. you. I probably met you because I was friends. Um, obviously, a, cl- a lot of people from your hometown. Um, That's right, aye, of course. So, but I don't think we were friends. We, in fact, just knew, yeah, because knew. I I was friends with Malky, etc. So, yeah, I, I we probably did. I, I don't know. You're probably talking fifteen, sixteen. I'm now thirty-four, so it's a long time. It's, uh, it's it's strange though because I've met a lot of people. It's the same for you, I would say, but I've met a lot of people from other parts of life, like kind of outside our, our hometowns. And or I've I've even met people from my from from high school, and they'll say something like, "Do you ever keep in touch with?" <laughs> and I, and they'll say, "What about him? What about him?" And I'm still best friends with like uh-huh. pretty much every single one of my best friends. I was best friends with them when I was twelve or thirteen. I have that same problem as well. We're planning a wedding at the moment, and the the wedding list was just ridiculous. Because yeah, that's, that's, as, but you're 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 kind of I've got a double you know, dunter because you know I I, I was um I. Stayed in Carlock and was friends with a lot of people from Carlock, and then I've got the group of friends from school, which you're part of. So, which is kinda... mainly mainly in Wishaw, do you think? Yeah, mainly in Wishaw. So I've got two. I've got two groups of friends, and trying to get everybody to get together, it's going to be a big affair, I think. Yeah, it's, 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 should probably get OK Magazine there or something. <laughs> I don't think, it, <laughs> don't think it's that popular, right? Well, enough, well, well, we'll, we'll try and we'll try and. Um, you've, you've got a year. To, is it next year? Isn't it? Yeah, maybe KO magazine or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, next year, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What I was wanting to talk to you about was, as I was saying there, like one of the, the website you're involved with, you're relaunching, and the name of the website is, well, you say it's it's a baseball forum. You were saying or baseball website. Yeah. Um. I mean, if it, I the background of it is, as as you know, it's it's. A, I kind of got into baseball about maybe 10, 11 years ago, something like that, and um, it's a minority sport in the UK, so uh, I used to talk to some people on that football forum about it and stuff like that, and always got pe- people annoying us saying, oh, it's just glorified rounders, so I decided to start a forum and try and encourage people for the UK and Ireland to post on it, just to give us somewhere to talk about it, so that was that's why it's Bases Loaded was the name that we chose for it. Bases Loaded? Dot yeah. EU. Dot EU. We went for the dot EU tag because there's people from Ireland coming in on it and stuff like that. So we didn't want a dot co dot UK. We wanted sort of dot EU so that it was inclusive of everyone really. But it, it can be really difficult to get. I mean, there's there's no doubt you could have got like dot com or dot net. It's really difficult to get a good domain name nowadays, unless you want to shell out a lot of money. Yeah, I think dot com was used by someone in America. Um, .co.uk was certainly available, I think it was more expensive, but we, we kind of liked the .eu idea because it was incorporated, it was shown that we were for the sort of including Ireland and stuff like that. Um, not to get into the politics of that, but it was just inclus- inclusive of, of everyone rather than just .co.uk. Yeah. But it's, it's not a very common domain, isn't it? Not? I mean, you would think it would be. But it's yeah, not, it seems, it's, I mean, I, I can't think of any other websites that use .eu. There's a few out there, but there's not many. It seems to be one of these sort of ones that, I don't know if it's frowned upon or people just don't like it, but it's quite an easy one to remember. And it's, yeah, you know, it is, yeah. But, I mean, they've effectively, I wouldn't say the, the, the domain name companies flooded the market, but 
you know, when we first started out, it was pretty much .com, .co.uk, .net, .org. There wasn't too many options, really. There wasn't, you know, you kind of just tried to make the best of the domains that were available, but over the last 10 years, there has been so many new domain name uh, registrations available, so many extensions. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's everything. I've been looking into a new project I'm doing, and I, I was actually shocked when I went into sort of like one, two, three reg or whatever and put it in, and the options, there is loads now. I mean, there's, I'm trying to think of some of them, there's like, is it's, dot com slash uk or so I don't know there, there was loads of them yeah anyway. I, I, the Wait, uk's right. got things like dot in fact I'll actually go and check that they've got things like um dot com dot uk dot uk dot yeah, org dot com, yeah it was all them uh, ones and I think there was uh, about fifteen or something to choose from or something when I was putting it in I was surprised with that because as you say even when we done the sort of bases loaded thing about maybe four or five years ago I think there was only maybe six to choose from back then it seems to have exploded again. Yeah, I mean, there was there was other regional um, domains that were available for other countries, but for the UK, we had .com, .org, .uk, etc. I mean, there was there was other ones. There's a lot of domain extensions that we sim we simply couldn't use. Um, for example, .info. You're not going to use that for a discussion forum. No. Uh, as as you new extensions. Yeah, I'm just looking through here on enom.com. Yeah. And they said there's no extensions. I, I saw on BBC on the BBC website today, I think they were trying to launch .uk. So it would be without the .co or the yeah, just .com, nah. just .uk. Which is, you wonder why you, they didn't do that in the first place, because they've got .us, you know, and they've got and dot, the yes uh, dot, and Yeah, they've got dot, uh, .ca for Canada. I, know, I don't know why they always put the .co, .uk, because there was other extensions that were only two letters, two characters. Yeah, I mean .dot uk would make sense. That'd be pretty sweet if that did come out. Actually, I think I, mean, I think like, I think people would have used it more if it, if it did come out. No, I mean you think it's .dot es is Spain, and you've got like a loads of them are like that. You know, um, .de well, what, is Germany. So well, see, as as you say, you know uh, .dot de is actually I think I think it's the only one behind com .dot de is the most popular domain extension in the world. Is it? Yeah, well, it's yeah, not it's surprising. Not that I mean, Germany is such a strong country and they export so much stuff, so there's so many com companies they're exporting, probably. I think, I, I was still surprised though, I mean, but when you think about it, I mean, after COM, the UK, Australia, Canada, even um, non-English speaking countries, they don't use, they, they'll still use COM, they won't use the regional domain, really. Yeah, yeah I mean, so, dot, dot .com yeah. is always viewed as a sort of multinational one, wasn't it? As a, yeah, as it's the best, it just, I mean... It's things like as well, like devices. I mean, if you if you're typing on the iPad, for example, it's got a button that just says dot com. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's right. Yeah. And there's, there's a, I think, I believe a lot of search engines as well. Then what they'll do is they'll if you type in something and just push return, like a name, I'll add the dot com for you. Yeah, I mean, we we certainly at my, uh, the company that I work for, we use dot com as a generic one. It's available in the US and everywhere else as well. Whereas we could ha we we do have regional. Variations like .de and stuff like that that come into the site too, but we we always have the common one at .com. I think I think for a big company, rather than spend time managing and kind of registering all these different domains, which obviously a big company wants to protect their interests and stop people from using the same name, but it's better to just have the .com and then just in a subdirectory put one for Germany, one for Ireland, one for yeah. the USA, one for the United Kingdom. It seems, but it depends because there's a lot of big, like Coca-Cola. Any, they'll have every regist, every day name name, yeah, excuse me, domain name extension possible. They will, they will register everything. If a new yeah. domain name extension comes out tomorrow, Coca-Cola will register it. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, but I mean, I think they would have rights to it anyway, legally. Yeah, 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 that's uh, true. The way that works. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but I was actually, God, there's about. Ten, like two thousand and one, I started to actually get into the the domain name game, so to speak, and um, where I used to register domain names. Yeah. And um, I used to sell domain names through a reseller as well. Now, one of one of the best one of the best domain. I mean, you let, I read a lot of news. One of the best best news stories I've ever heard was um, there was a man and his his second name was Manny, but his initials were A R. <laughs> so. He had a website. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had a website, armani.com, because his name 
example, yeah, I'm, not Manny. Dreaming, I'm yeah. not dreaming Manny or something like that. So, uh, obviously, the, the man knew what he was doing. You know, he, he, yeah. he could have probably registered his proper name, but he registered armanny.com, and, and Manny took him to court. And they, they used, obviously, they brought in the, the big high-class lawyers so spending lots of money. I always imagine this picture of, like, the guys, the lawyers from The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone in the crowd just gets scared because they see they see these lawyers walking. Um, like Lionel Hutz will jump out the window. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the the guy actually won the case. The guy won the case because oh, yeah. the court says like, listen, you can't, ha you don't have a monopoly on that. The the guys, it's, when you t when you steal a domain name, it's called domain hijacking. Domain hijacking. And yeah. he wasn't hijacking the domain. It was, you know, it's like played a genuine uh, claim. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like if if, if there was a company called TB like K Rooney and you put yeah. K Rooney as your, they can't stop you. You know. No, that's true. Yeah. It's, it's different for brands. Obviously, brands you can't get away with it. But well, Armani is a brand. But the problem was, someone out there had the same. You know, it just have a lucky name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if you, I mean, if you type in, I'll just double check that actually. But they must have obviously after they lost it over time, they would have bought the domain name. Yeah, they've got it now, so they must have paid the man. Surely you got a good few quid out of that. Yeah, I mean, see, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, when you've I can only imagine how much he got. I don't know. I mean, he was obviously going to sell. You're going to sell because yeah. who, it was like a small website for himself. Let's hope uh, it was at least six figures. <coughs> oh, I would love it if it was more. Because yeah. let's face it, they need that domain. There's no oh, way they, they can't have that domain. That's right. You know? But once once a court has said, like, you ca you can't just take the domain name back, then what do they do? They have to buy it. You oh, know, they, and have they, ha to, they have to. And he's in a strong position, so he can help hold out. I tell you, they got a fair old bit of traffic through it as well. Oh yeah, you you could have just I don't know, just put information about yourself and put a couple of adsense Google AdSense banners, and made thousands of thousands of dollars, thousands of pounds every day. Yeah, that'd be nice. Unfortunately, there's no brands out there called <laughs> <Yeah>. cr Crooney. <laughs> <laughs> Crooney. <laughs> oh, well. That'd be so funny. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, the, um, so I was wanting to talk about like the website bases. Do you, do you want me to show it on the screen? If you want, I. Um, well, I've got a drink of water. I'm dehydrated here. The, um, for the benefit of people who are going to listen to this on iTunes, we're we're, we're recording this via Google Hangouts, so it's automatically shown on YouTube. So, and one of the things that Google Hangouts got that's really good is a little option called Screen Share, so we can show you different websites and still keep talking and you'll see what uh, what we see what we see on my screen so I'll just bring it up here yeah basically a little bit of background on this um, I mean you were involved with me at the time with bases loaded I had the idea to do this forum so I went to the guy who knows about forums which is yourself and you were kind enough to help us um, basically set up the website um, set up the forum, get it up and running, that kind of thing. Um, a bit of background on the forum. We set it up in, I think it would be 2008, maybe. Does that sound about I right? I can check that if, if you want, actually. Um, sure it was. I'm sure it was 2008. But anyway, we set it up and we chose the domain name and stuff and we set it up just as a standalone forum. Um, the football forum we were discussing earlier, 90% of the guys who posted on it um, also ended up posting on the football forum and one day a thread was started on there by myself, believe it or not, called Rounders which just took off and it's now got about 18,000 posts but what actually happened is that everybody started talking baseball on there and fell away from the the forum and through time the forum basically just got left on the wilderness and even I wasn't checking it if I'm being honest and the security wasn't so great on it, so it ended up getting filled with spam. So anyone that was getting on was just instantly turned away, was getting turned off by the amount of spam that was on it. About, maybe about three or four months ago, last year we were talking about doing it, but about three or four months ago we got our act together and decided to do a podcast on baseball based in the sort of UK and Ireland. So we, me and four of my mates got together to do it, and one of my other mates, Andy, who's going to be being on it with me, I said, why don't we get the forum back up and running? So <laughs> it was 20,000 members I cleared out and about 20,000 threads had all got cleaned off of it um, to tidy the forum up. 
but Andy decided he wanted to build a, a landing page to keep everything together. So mm-hmm. I think what you're just about to show us is probably um, the landing page that was designed by Andy, which keeps the blog together, keeps the the podcast links to the podcast and links to the forum and any of the social media stuff all in the one the one place. So. Well, then, what you were talking about there with the spam, that's something I was wanting to talk to you later about, we can talk about later. Yeah. Um, but the reason is, we, we actually we built the discussion forum using vBulletin, we which did. was the best discussion forum at the time. But the problem was, it wasn't updated for many years, and this is what always happens with discussion forum uh, software, is if you, don't, you, if you don't update it regularly, if you don't use it, um, update it often, is there's always, I mean, the hackers kind of catch up yeah, and they'll find they'll they'll create automated scripts to join automatically register, add spam, add advertisements for sex, for for drugs, for yeah. the most bizarre things ever. It's just crazy, but it's it's, it's a big pro, it's a big problem. It's something that when I first started using discussion forums, it wasn't really a, a problem. I mean, the, you had people manually signing up to try and promote a website, but not yeah. not o- automated. Nothing was automated, and it's a big problem because I mean. The scripts available. You could do a quick Google search. You'll find it. The scripts available. That you simply just type in what you met. You buy the script, type in your message, and it will submit it to literally thousands of forums. Yeah. <coughs> and it's it's quite it a problem. It is a nightmare, like because it's. I mean, we've got we've got security set now. They're not actually able to post on the forum, but they're still able to register. And what's happening is that genuine registrations are getting lost in amongst. Um, New regist- uh, these spam registrations, so it's mm-hmm. making it a real nightmare to try and admin the forum and get the guys on there that's new to register to it. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, th- I, th- I mean, I, I, I think, it's, it, if if someone is a legitimate member uh, and they've not posted on the forum for years, then pff, delete them. It's, well, it's, 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 I mean, it's, it, <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's, I mean, it really, if someone really wants to post, they'll post again. And and it comes a point where the numbers are just like it's just massaging your ego more than actually well, helping the forum. I cut it down to there was me and two other members left after I deleted everything of the, orig- <laughs> of the, of the original members. And in fact, did you delete me? Did you delete me? I, I was unable to delete you. Or you would have went. <laughs> oh, that's actually. okay. <laughs> so you're, you're still there. That's uh, okay. <laughs> you're, I'm, you're I'm, fine. I'm, I'm such a hypocrite. I'm talking about deleting people when it doesn't matter, and I'm, I'm so worried about someone deleting me. <laughs> no, you, you were protected because you're the main administrator on it. But it was um, I, I basically pruned off everyone. I, I wasn't able. There was no quick way to get rid of twenty thousand members and search through and find who was legitimate. So I just basically cut everybody apart from me, you, and I think one other person survived. Okay. And then I just said to the people I knew, re-register. I think we've got about maybe 30 genuine member, members at the moment, but um, the problem is that these new guys that's registered that's found us through Twitter and stuff like that, I'm having to ask them to contact us on Twitter and tell me their username, and then I can go in and find them and get them um, activated. But it is a major problem at the well, moment. That, that, that's something I can, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to help you with. Yeah. Um, I was wanting. I was wanting to show you the website first, just to go back to what you were saying there. The, um, it was actually we registered the domain on September twenty third, two thousand and eight. Yeah, I thought it was two thousand and eight. Yeah. Right. So five, you got a good memory because I, I, I would have. Yeah, I would have forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, okay, I'll just. Oof. I need to watch that. <laughs> I'm switching between all the different tabs there because I was looking you for the. Closes the, down. Yeah, that's very dangerous. I honestly <laughs> nearly ended the, the hangout there. <laughs> okay, um, I'll just click on this screen share. I'll just be more careful. Well, that's funny. That that lead quite nicely when we start talking about the podcast and what happened to our first one. But we can talk about that later. We've had that same problem ourselves. <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's a problem. Okay, that is for the the people watching on YouTube. This is a, this is Kevin's website. This is basesloaded.eu. It's quite a nice design. I like it. It's it's got it's got um, an image rotator on the home page. The, was that different pages or different articles? Or it's different pages you're linking to? Yeah, it's just the different pages. <coughs> the only the only problem with that is is, is that Andy's built it in Flash, um, yeah. which causes causes a problem on um, mobile or tablet. Yeah, you really need to use. There's quite a lot of jQuery and HTML5 based um, image rotators that you should maybe use. Look into. 
Uh, that's the, the the first one you mentioned there is what we are looking at at the moment. It's just uh, trying it's to It's nice though, time. I like it. It's nice. It's a good design. Yeah, I mean, Andy basically done this in his own time. He just basically went ahead and I think, <laughs> I think it took him about 18 hours or something to, to get it all to, the way he liked the look of it. So I, I kind of let him go on with it. Andy's got zero forum experience at all. So I had to kind of he changed the look of the forum to try and match this home page. Well, I've, I've not seen it yet. I'll just click on it and just down and see what it's... Some success and some not success. He's got the colours right, but the alignment oh, seems nice. to a little bit yeah. out. <clears throat> I've actually got ex some experience with it. It can be quite difficult because, you know, see to to add uh, uh, the header and add the footer to the the design of a, of yeah. a discussion forum. It's really easy. You just kind of... You view the source of a website, you copy the code, you, you paste it over. It's really easy, but the problem becomes there's always seems to be conflicts with the style sheets. It, you need to kind of remove references to other parts of the style sheet. And, you know, the way forums are, they've always got like a, a general font that does yeah. that works for the whole page. And I, I don't know, I, I've, I've deleted what I thought was every part of the other style sheet and it still didn't look 100% correct, you know? Yeah. Um, um I mean, there's there's some stuff on it. This page looks actually doesn't look too bad, but when you yeah, get into like, okay. when you get into post a thread and stuff like that, there's like the the new thread buttons over. It. So see how this black bar? I don't know if you see it where the sort of register is. Ah, there's, I can see the, the new thread. The new thread yeah, button. you see it now. It's all of this. I the, think. I mean, this this, this will partly be due to how old this is because this script. I mean, it, this is like the 2008 or 2009 version of VBulletin. Yeah. Which is for for forum software is very old, you know. It's yeah, it's old. And that, this is where the problems arise with all these um, with the spam problem. Now the the other thing is you've got now you're on Twitter, aren't you? Yeah, we're on Twitter and Facebook as well. Uh, am I on Facebook? If I, I don't know, if I've, I'll sign up to that later. I'm not sure if I've joined on Facebook. Um, so the for for those of you who want to check out um, the the Twitter page for that, it's Bases Loaded EU. Yeah, that base is loaded EU. You no, know, you've got a hundred or so of people yeah, following. Yeah, I mean, you. we only started recently, and we've, I think we've got 120 odd followers now. It's it's been good. The, the, the thing is, one of the key things about it is the guys that's following us. Um, most of these guys are the target audience, if you like. It's people in the UK and Ireland that like baseball, um, and really struggle for a place to talk about it. It's one of them things, if you like a minority sport in this country, you try to talk to people about it that don't care about it and they just aren't interested. Um, but when you start um, when you start talking on Twitter and you find people, it's great to get a wee chat, but then you're limited with Twitter because of the, the characters you've got. So that was that was the, the reason we've done the Yeah, forum. I mean, then, Twitter's, Twitter's not really a... It's, it's, it's good for what it is, but it, it's not that you can have meaningful conversations. No, it's difficult because you're limited with the characters and stuff like that. And if you the the the, the podcast idea, I mean, the podcast's been great fun. The podcast has been brilliant. It's been way ahead of our expectations. The first one we done, we thought, right, it's it's just five guys chatting about baseball um, to the wrong side of the pond, as you as you like. And um, I think we we got 62 downloads and about 190 plays in the first show, which was way ahead of any of our expectations. None is expected to do anything close to that. So it's been good. And the thing is, it's been good fun as well. It's the nerves in the first show we could tell, but the second, but the second one we done last night, um, I think all of us were feeling a bit more confident because we knew people wanted to hear what we were talking about. So it kind of you feed off that confidence, and it was definitely a, a much better offering last night. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's is something I'm, I'm quite interested in because. Well, obviously, this this is the first. Um, this is the show's called the Business Hangout. But what I'll be doing is, after the video is posted on YouTube, I'm going to download it, rip it off, rip off the audio, and upload it to iTunes. So, podcasting and video is something I'm really interested in. So, you've got you've released was it two episodes of the podcast? Yeah, the second one. The second one was recorded um, on Tuesday night, so it didn't come out yesterday afternoon. Okay, so my you're the you're the the veteran, <laughs> and this. <laughs> I've, done, I've actually I've, I've I've done one show with the Mets boys as well, who's another baseball podcast based on the Mets. Um, some guys I know that are involved with that, and I did one show with them, which was quite enjoyable as well. Again, a lot of nerves involved in it when you do the first one. It's strange. This doesn't feel nervous to me anymore. It's weird, and I've only done two shows. But that, that, that's that's something I understand because 
for anyone who reads my blog, um, I was I've been traveling around South America for a while, put it that way. <laughs> um, and uh, at this when was it in, in the middle of January, I went to where was it uh, Iguazu Falls, and I was in Iguazu Falls. It's basically it's like a huge waterfalls between Argentina and Brazil, and I just spur of the moment I says to my girlfriend like can you take a video of me and I wasn't nervous but I was I was conscious of the fact that I was recording a video if that makes sense you know I was like I think the video that I eventually uploaded to YouTube I think it was like the third or fourth take so since then I've not had a problem but the first one I was like hi my name is Kevin Wooden and then I'd go ah fuck 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 and then yeah. just cut it, you know because I was like uh, I was so conscious I didn't I didn't have a like most people, if you read, if this book to explain what you should do, how to practice, but I just wanted to just try it, you know, and I wanted to make yeah. mistakes, but I, I hadn't prepared anything, I hadn't, I didn't even know what I was going to talk about, I was just like, this is so cool, I should take a video here, you know, it's different, <laughs> yeah. but what I found is, the second, the se I mean, I've, for those kind of, I did a couple of little travel videos, and for those videos, I never, I never really, I didn't take any notes, I just thought, right, I'll do one here, and it just becomes, it just becomes more natural, and it, and, you know, it's, it doesn't seem feel. You don't feel. I, you I feel less self-conscious. Yeah, the video side it's a wee bit different because we don't do any video on ours. But it's funny you're talking about that. I was I was working in the US last two weeks ago at a trade show. I was over over um, with the company I work for, and well, I was quite a famous. Big... Was it not quite a famous trade yeah. show? Or did yeah, you well, go somewhere famous? Well, I we went to I went to visit uh, Orange County Choppers. Ended that watches the American Chopper show. Okay, like, and I went to visit Orange County Choppers in New York on the way home. Is that and, that's uh, is that a TV show where the with the with the dad's got the the best mustache in the world, the best? Oh, beard? he's got the Hulk Hogan, the Hulk Hogan mustache. Oh, you know? nice, nice. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's a big show. It's finished now. It's actually it's actually all done. But we went up there and went went to the shop, and then we managed to. Um, Gate crash Vinny and got a chat with him and stuff, which was cool. He was really cool. But at the trade show, it was funny. We were at the trade show, and um, I worked with a big German guy who he's lived in Scotland for quite a few years now, speaks perfect English and stuff. But I was standing talking to somebody, and I turned around, and he was basically just standing on the stand on camera. And this guy who does a bit of YouTube stuff in America, I should actually have got a link to it. He basically walked up and went, Can I interview you? And Matt went, Yep. And he just pulled a camera out and went, Go. Tell me about your product, and it's like when you see Matt on it, he's like you can see the nervousness in him. He's like because he hadn't didn't give him a chance to prepare anything, didn't give. He just, <laughs> just he, said he, go. He basically walked up and said go for it, and I was just looking at him. I was, I was kind of making him laugh in the background as well because I was like, thank God that isn't me because I would be like, eh, eh. and in fairness to Matt, he done a really good job of it. But it's it's that thing where if somebody's videoing you and recording you, you are more conscious of what you're saying, and it's. I, feel I so think it's. I mean, I'm naturally I'm not, I'm not I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm I'm an introvert but I'm not a very I'm quite outgoing as well but I'm not an ex extrovert I'm not I'm not someone who obviously wants to be the life yeah. and soul of the party or wants the, the attention and I was never really comfortable e even like for example like at weddings where the guy get out with the camera I'm, I'm usually the guy uh, moving the head out to, to, to get out of the way cause, you know yeah. you you'd never want to be recorded when you're when you're drunk <laughs> no, no, I mean, I've, I've got one of our, our pals' weddings, I'd, I'd shudder to see the, the video, to be honest, because I think I was just like, um, uh, uh, thanks for inviting me, and um, have, have a, have a, I hope you have, have a happy life together, <laughs> something like that. You know, oh yeah, because this nervous. is what they do now, isn't it? You've, they, yeah. they, record everyone, like, they record a message, and then uh, we were at a wedding they would have presented guy. them. The guy had like a floodlight attached to the front of the camera, and he was basically, it must just be a thing, you have to be sitting there like this. Trying to like shield their eyes for this <laughs> camera, and he just stuck it right in your face. <laughs> it was just like say something. They're like, um, "Thanks for the, inviting the me." Problem, the problem is these guys is these guys are, are so comfortable with it. Um, yeah. Because they do it for a living. Actually, the 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 second guest I'm getting onto um, this show is my friend Sasha Kona, and he's uh, he's a professional photographer. So I don't think he does videos, but I mean, I'm, I'm I saw he's got on on his website. Um, he's got a video, a professionally done video of him talking about his business, and he's so. I, yeah. I thought it, I thought it was really impressed. He was so comfortable with the camera, and it was fantastic. But I think I, I think it's just like anything. You need experience. I, I think the more you do these things, the better you get. I mean, as I say, that was only the second podcast last night, and every single one of us on it sounded way more comfortable and 
the sound was a lot better as well, which was a problem yeah. on the first one using Skype. Um, but the key to it is, is obviously you could probably see the headset that I'm wearing at the moment if you're watching the video. Um, having something like that is essential to stop the echo and the feedback and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was the, the first the first week we done ours. I was in my kitchen and it was so <laughs> echoey. It was like it sounded. I've been saying but, uh, you in a but cupboard. you were just using you were just using like the microphone from the laptop. Yeah, I basically had a set of head. <laughs> I, had a set of, I had headphones. I had headphones. Oh, okay. in, yeah, yeah, but I was okay. using basically the headphones that I had. Where I was planning to use my iPad the first week, um, the first show. But then I was kind of controlling the Skype, and Andy was recording the show. So we tried to mess about my iPad, and the, the headphones I had basically had an integrated microphone, but it was only one jack plug. Ah, so okay. for the iPad and stuff like that, where your laptop you need it split, you need two. So. It never worked in any way. It was just the sound was just a nightmare. And we had Gary over in Ireland. I don't know what his problem was, but you could hardly hear him at all, which kind of took a bit away from the first show. But these are the things you learn and, and improve on. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think making mistakes is the best way to learn, pretty much well, is, for, for, for pretty much everything. But like um, you, you sent me the link the other day to the first episode, and it was the the quality was was not very good. But it was night and day with the second episode. Everything was clear. Everyone felt more comfortable as well. They were talking and yeah, it does become more natural. You do get to a stage while you're doing it that you just forget you're being recorded, and that that's when it becomes more natural. But then I have got to be careful because I don't have the most easy to understand accent. So I've got to be careful because if I get too comfortable, I start speaking really quickly, <laughs> and that that's when it becomes it becomes a serious problem. Yeah, I mean, this is something else I brought up with the readers in my blog. It was because I was still, I was not self-conscious. I mean, I, I'm not ashamed of. I, I like the way I speak, and but I, I'm I'm conscious of the fact that people from other countries, particularly, <laughs> I was going to say as as soon as does, and it, particularly in, in in the USA and Canada, they perhaps don't have much experience with with their accent. You know, they find it yeah. difficult. Um, but I was, I was, I was. I was really pleased that all the my blog said no, we could understand you. The yeah. best issue was obviously the sound from the waterfall when I did the first video. But I, I, I actually had the opposite view. Um, I'm not sure if you knew this. I, I had a, a WordPress website last year. I, I'd run it for two years. Uh, it was called w, WPMods.com. Now it was bought by a guy, uh, a, a guy called Michael. Um, he's a really nice guy. He's the owner of a website called WP Hub. WP is just it's the, the, the abbreviation WordPress. that most websites use for WordPress, yep. which is the blogging platform. Now, we were talking about maybe doing some videos together. I was going to do some video tutorials because it's something I want to do more online. Um, and but and I said, listen, I was like, hands like cards on the table. It's okay, like you, because he'd mentioned lots of times he hadn't seen any of, any of my videos, and he said that he wanted something ten out of ten, like a really professional video. I said, listen. Michael, it's okay. I know you want something really, really professional. Um, it, I understand that if your audience is primarily in America, they're going to have difficulties understanding me because they're not used to my accent. Now, M Michael's fine. I've spoke to him on the phone lots of times. He's a great guy, and he's he's travelled in England. I, I'm not sure if he's been to Scotland, but he's got experience with listening to the the accent, so it's not a problem. But <laughs> he sent it to a couple of friends who were online. <laughs> And he's like, I'll just, he's like, don't be offended. I'll just copy and paste what the responses were. <laughs> and I can't remember all of them, but the, the first one was, what the fuck? Is this guy even speaking English? <laughs> and I, <was> like, <laughs> and I, th I think I was, I was just, I, I felt bad. I was actually felt worse for him. I just wanted him to be like, listen, it's okay. I'm not offended, you know. Um, <laughs> That's funny. I, I, I'm not offended, but the... Yeah, and someone else says, "Is this what? What is wrong? I can't even understand anything this guy is saying." But it's so it's, accent, uh, mate. It is our, the, yeah. part Scotland, the part of Scotland <laughs> we, we come from. We do have a genuinely difficult accent. I've got a funny story like that as well. I was at um, I was at our UK trade show for work, and um, my old boss Nigel, he's Welsh, and uh, he started his own company, and he had a um. He sells a product from Portugal, and the Portuguese guy was over at the show, and he's standing with Nigel talking, and I walked over and started talking to Nigel, and he said, "Is this Welsh as well?" And Nigel's like, "No," he says, "This is not English." <laughs> <laughs> and Nigel's like, "That's Scottish." He's like, "Ah, 
Scottish, definitely not English. Yeah. <laughs> quite it's... funny, but he's just like, he, he could not understand a word. I was it, it is difficult for people from other countries, and it's, it's like, I mean, as you know, I, I travel quite a lot, so um, the kind of internet bum, and there's, it's, it, it's kind of frustrating when you've got people speaking in English and they don't know, they can't even speak English properly, but everyone can understand them. And yeah, I'm speaking I fluently. Um, for the first time I noticed this when I was in, I think I was like 23, 24, I was in Bangkok. And I travelled back up to Bangkok to change my ticket, and the woman in the, in in the office, um, I think it was you know Star Travel, STA Travel. Yeah. They had an office there, and the woman really she had a lot of difficulty understanding me. And then this Russian guy walked into the office like the same thing. He wanted to change his ticket to another day, and it was hello, a change ticket, and it was like. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. that's <laughs> if anyone was listening. That was not me attempting a, a Russian accent. <laughs> I was, just, but um, yeah, it was, it was really, really, really basic English. Like someone probably been learning English for four or five months, and they've been understood one hundred percent. But it's <laughs> because is... you've got you've got two people um, speaking very basic on the English. same level. Yeah, basic so that, English. That, that, that's... It's something I can understand now because I'm I'm learning Spanish well trying to learn Spanish now. I've been in South America for about a year and a half now, or a little bit more, and when when so a native starts talking, they speak like like we are, we speak fast, we, sp we use, yeah. we use dialect. Uh, dialect, regional yeah. words, like slang words, um, and when I've spoken with someone else who's learning Spanish, it's, it's much easier to understand because we're both at the same level, we're not yeah. using words that you're not going to find. In it's complex language, I know, it's, it, that is a big problem. I mean, I deal with sort of 42 countries now um, through work. I, I do export. I didn't realise your com yeah, the company was that was that big. Well, we're not that big. We're only we're only um, there's 19 employees, and we're based in Scotland and manufacture in Scotland. But we what's export. The, what's the name of the What's the name of the company? Sorry. It's called Scott Oiler. They make chain lubrication systems for motorbikes. Okay. Um, but but we distribute to to I'm the export manager. We distribute to 42 countries, so. If I'm conscious and when I'm speaking to people on the phone, if I keep English at a really sort of, you know, proper level and, and, and realise the words I'm saying, people can understand you. It's when you start using slang words or even, not even slang words, just the normal, the way you would normally speak because you don't use sort of standard English, if you like, that's when it becomes a problem. Yeah. Which, I mean, I think this is, this is perhaps difficult for some people, like for for people from other countries, but effectively we speak and use lots of different words, and we'd never write them down. You know, if we're yeah, we've got the way that we write English is the same that anyone would write English in America or yeah. England or anywhere. But when we talk, I mean, it's not just obviously in Scotland. It's Liverpool, Newcastle, whatever. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, they will use they will use words that you only use when you're speaking together. But I think that's. I mean, I think that's the same of. Every country, just about, if you know what I mean. I think all countries have dialects and have, you know, it's the same in Germany and it's the same in Italy and all these well, places. Yeah, I've, I've, I've learned it as well in South America because, I, I mean, I've, I was in Colombia for a year and I, I didn't realise this, but a lot of words I learned are only used in Colombia. So yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm using right. words in another, like in, in Argentina and Uruguay, and they're like looking at me like strange. Like. Yeah. But it's like Spain as well. I mean, your Spanish that, that you learn won't be Catalan either, they speak Catalan in the, yeah, the, yeah. the North region. It's just, it's all it's all different and it's all variations and although it's based on the same language, it's it's just the, the, the dialect really that causes a problem. Yeah, um, the, 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 the Spanish from South America is easier, easier to learn. Yeah. Because one of the forms um, is Vesotros it's called, like, like you would say you all are and that's not used here at all. So ah, right. like you'd have to learn that in Spain, but here you can so you're basically using five instead of the six you would need to learn in Spain. So like straight away is you've got yeah, less, to learn. Easier, less and, to learn. And and yeah. and obviously they've not got the um, what is it? I don't know what the, the name of it, the, the kind of lisp that you use the, the th 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 th. Oh yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's more more clear here. especially in Ecuador and Colombia that the, the Spanish is really easy to understand. But then when I was in Chile and Argentina, you know, it's really that really really difficult to understand yeah, people I was, speaking. I was, I was having um, it was funny. I, I met our um, Argentinian distributor. 
Yeah. And he he doesn't speak much English, and I don't really speak much English either. So we had a great a great time trying to communicate with each other at the show. It was it was actually it was it was quite amusing to see it. You can do it. You can you can speak you can speak pretty well with someone in person. Yeah. Using, you know, sign I mean, language I sign and language things. And, yeah. It uh, does work. There's a lot of things are obviously lost in context. You know, yeah. the, there's there's the. There's, um, I mean, you could talk and you'll you'll use examples, but th there's a lot of time when I'm speaking to someone and they'll say like "entiendes," and I'm like, "Yes, I understand. Yes, like <laughs> you entiendo, but but you've you do understand, but you don't understand the full context of what they're saying." Yeah, that makes sense actually. But I mean, a lot of that's probably, you know, true if if someone is listening to like if someone face some parts of England was listening to me and you talking. They'll pick up the gist of the conversation, but they won't pick up every part of it. Well, just of the, for example, like the word you say, "just." I don't think "just" is a word that you use outside Scotland, is it? No, probably. Or is it? It, it maybe yeah. is. That's the thing. You actually forget which words are local and which words aren't. It's actually worse when I'm speaking to you because obviously we <laughs> yes. speak, speak the exact same. It's a, it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, because I think uh, like my house back in Scotland is what three miles from your house. About that, aye. It's yeah. A, yeah. Well. What what I was going to ask you was, no, I look I looked at a lot of different solutions for my podcast, but you've went with the service Spreaker. We have, um, yeah. So as, was it S P R E A K E R? -E yeah, yeah Spreaker dot com. Yeah, Spreaker's Spreaker's pretty good. Um, I'll, I'll maybe pull it up for for people. Um, yeah, we we went with Spreaker because we had this ambition to do the show live. Um, we thought it'd be a great idea to do. Uh, do it live. We could welcome people to call in. We could we could put callers onto the call and stuff like that. And the first show we did, we then decided, oh, speaker has a record function. Let's be clever about this. Let's um, record the show first, see how it sounds, and decide whether to put it out. So we all we all got together, and there was a guy Harper who does um, Mets Boys and does Homeboys and a few other podcasts. He came to help us. So we got about 58 minutes in, well, exactly 58 minutes in, and it had went pretty well for a first attempt, and then my laptop crashed, and it, like, <laughs> properly crashed. It didn't do just, like, a little freeze. <coughs> Nothing would work. And it was like I had to hold in the power button and totally reset it. Um, I had the option to boot up for safe mode, but I decided to boot it up, and eventually it took, it took me literally five minutes to get back on and get Skype back up and running. The guys were there, and... We went back onto Spreaker and we discovered that we had lost everything basically. It was gone. I can see myself by the way, I can't see Spreaker. Ah, speaker. Uh, yeah, I was I was going to load it to show you the page there, but then it did, it did come it, up but then it went. No, away. no, it's just because I'm logged into the dashboard, so I'm gonna I'll, I'll open up uh, Firefox and then I'll open up a different browser. Yeah. It's probably um, safer anyway because of me moving about the cursor on on yeah. Chrome is not good <laughs> because I've <laughs> Oh, I've got, uh, there's a chance I'm going to close this window. Um, okay. Um, uh, so box. basically, we, we, we lost the whole 58 minutes of the first show, which actually turned out to be a bit blessing in disguise because looking back, the introduction to the show was ridiculously bad. We never mentioned any of the website or anything. We never told anybody how we'd got it. It was a really nervous start. So the second time we came to record it, it was all a lot more... Um, it was a lot better because we, we kind of were prepared and realised the stuff we'd missed out, if you like. Um, yeah. Spre Spreaker's are quite a popular one, uh, and basically you can subscribe to channels on Spreaker. I'll just, uh, I'll just, I'll just show the screen to everyone here. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so th this is it here at Spreaker.com. It's really easy to get it set up. I mean, uh, um, you probably saw that before, people watching it. Uh, the dashboard's pretty easy. It's really, really user-friendly. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like podcasting for dummies, really, isn't it? You know, it's oh, just it's, it's, it's so <laughs> straightforward. I mean, I started using it to listen to Nets Boys, which is another baseball um, podcast done by some some guys I know, and I then know. I started listening to um, there's Hail Hail Media on there, which is where Mets Boys is, which is a collection of Celtic podcasts for the football, for soccer, um, and. I started, started listening to some of the stuff on that. Um, if you got that top bit where it says speaker, you can search for like bases loaded up there. Or right. Hail Hail Media if you want. 
Base is loaded. It's, there's a space in it. Oh, okay. It's two words. So you you think you think the search engine would still? You think it would find it? Oh, there is. Yeah, the base is loaded. Show. That's us. So there's then, um, there's two episodes, isn't there? Yeah, there's two episodes. Aye. So we lost we lost the first episode, and what what our decision after that was to do was um we would still use Sp Spreaker as it's because it's a great host. Uh, we can pick a link up from that and drop it into the blog, the podcast page on our website, and it keeps everything together and it records the number of downloads, the number of replays, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a really useful podcast too. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. Um, I was quite impressed by it. Um, I'll just I'm trying to find the the prices to tell people what the prices are because it's quite affordable, isn't it? It's yeah, it's like, yeah, see, see, yeah, it's like tw twenty dollars, twenty dollars a month we pay to be a broadcaster. So, so that. I mean that that gives you five hundred hours, which is quite a lot. Yeah, three hours Max. at a time maximum, so it's, it's it's pretty decent. So realistically, I mean, if you do, if, if someone out there wants to do a podcast, um, and and they think the show will be one hour, then they'll get five hundred episodes for twenty dollars a month. Yeah, I know it's for nothing, isn't it? That's pretty good. Uh, it, it, um, it it works. It links up with iTunes as well, although you need to. We've recently got onto iTunes that I'm not going to lie and pretend I know how I've done it because it was Andy that actually <laughs> done that. Andy that actually set that up. Um, but I believe it was just a case of submitting the podcast to them. Um, they reviewed it, which took a couple of days, and come back and okayed it to be on iTunes. So now we're actually um, on iTunes, so it's easy for Apple people to download. What's really good about this, if you're on Android or stuff, or even on a laptop, is if you go to the show, I don't know if you want to show that page, if you go back to like, yep. like the basic loaded show page, on your phone, you've just got an option where you can hit download. Um, well, I can actually show you that because I've got the application on my iPad. If I can get my iPad, I can show you that. Because the, the the actual the application for Speaker is, I was really impressed for the iPad. It's 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 kind of like a a, a DJ studio, isn't it? like a radio yeah, kind of mixing board. Well, that's what got, I, when you go to record, things, you, just, you just press play for, like for, to add an intro. You press another button to to do the music outro. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. It's like a, a DJ, but you can you can load up sounds. So if you wanted to like somebody say something stupid, you can add in like a daft tone, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, because we, we had all of that set up for the first show and, and kind of lost it all. But I mean, Spreaker is a useful tool. The Mets Boys, for instance, and Homeboys and stuff like that. Um, Mets Boys is a Mets po podcast. Homeboys is a Celtic one. They do live shows. And they welcome live calls in, so they're on Skype broadcasting live on Spreaker, and then people can call them in with points. It's almost like a a, call, a phone in show. A so a talk show. how how do they call in though? Do they call in well, using Spreaker or do they call in using Skype or Skype? What? They get them to add them on Skype. So you would so they're running the show. Say they've got a Mets Boys um, Skype, and they will say to people live on the show, if you want email, here's the email. If you want to join in the show. Add us on Skype, and then they'll welcome them in. You know, they'll add them on Skype and have you sitting there, and obviously you just don't speak. And then Harper or, or Jason will say, "Right, um, we've been joined by Kevin Muldoon. What's your point?" And then you can speak. So it's yeah. it's, it's pretty good. The only thing that it does lead to though is um, any dead time, dead air that they get, or any um, you know, any sound problems or dropouts of Skype or anything like that. It's all going out live. So that's the. The sort of neg negative to you, isn't it? Well, we um, we spoke about this briefly the other day. Um, yeah, we spoke about this briefly the other day, and I I'm kind of I'm of the fan. I, I like I like the idea of making mistakes. <laughs> Not I don't like yeah. the idea of making mistakes. I like watch and all. Yeah. What was that? CCU um, raw. I want it raw. I you wanted want it raw. Like. Raw baby. <laughs> raw baby. <laughs> It's like I, I don't know. I mean, Andy that Andy that helps us out, and Andy that, that works kind of side by side with me on bases loaded podcast, and it's, um, Andy is super anal, but he he wants everything to sound good, and Andy does the editing on it, and he does a great job. And to be honest, at first I was kind of like, oh, but I kind of like the works on all side of it. And then Andy took the first podcast and edited a couple of wee bits out of it and cleaned it up. And to be honest, if we had went worse on all the way, the second podcast there, it would have been terrible because we had a bit of an issue with sound. Um, we had Mark had to leave and uh, go and do something, and Gary had to go and basically to switch from his home to work, he had to go and travel to work and call back in. 
Now, if we had done that all live, you would hear us all saying, right, all right, Gary, you're away, and that's great, mate, see you later. And then you would have a mark saying, listen, guys, I need to go, I'll be back in a wee while or whatever, and all that kind of stuff. And what Andy was I able to do was cut, he cut that out, and see, to be honest, it does sound so much better for it. Because I, 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 don't, I don't know, like, I, th- I agree with you that, like, if there's really major mistakes, like at the start where people are having problems connecting and things like that, you obviously want to delete that. But as far as... As far as people leaving and stuff, it's it's not something I it's not something I think is a, a big problem. I don't the, think it's a big problem, but I think if somebody's sitting in a train, you know, listening to you talking about baseball and they, they're quite and they're quite listening to you know, you're talking about this team and that team and then suddenly um it's like, Right guys, I need to go and it's like, Oh right, Gary and, and I don't, don't know if people I, I don't, necessarily I don't, want to listen to that, you know. I just I just know myself that for, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts through my iPad and the ones I, I, I listen to a couple of I've got a few like in the podcast app for on, on iTunes on um, on iPads and iPhones, you you can subscribe to different podcasts. Yeah, if, and it automatically I've, gives you them. Yeah, it automatically downloads them for you. And I've I subscribed to two or three business ones, but mostly the ones I've been subscribing to are, are like for from comedians like Joe Rogan yeah. and Ari Shafir. I like he's he's a good comedian too. And I, I what I like about their shows is they're just relaxed. They're just talking as if. They're just hanging out, having a beer, talking, and they do. They leave in. I mean, it's it's professional in the fact that they they put intro music and they're good at what they do. But if someone's leaving or coming in to the the podcast, they just leave it in. You know, like for example, it's quite it's quite frequent for shows like that for someone to arrive to the show late and then they'll say, "Hey, welcome," and then they'll they'll start talking. You know, like the actual yeah, guest, that, the, that, the guest of the show will arrive in the middle of the show. I mean that stuff I wouldn't mind. It's just like I don't know. It was just there was there was a couple of times on Tuesday night, and there was certainly one time when Andy had a bit of a problem with sound. And he's like, guys, we're going to have to stop the now. And then um, we were able to chat for a wee bit while he got it fixed, and then he cut it back in and stuff like that. And if that was live, you know, if anybody's listening to that live, they're just going, well, I can't be bored listening to this anymore. Whereas oh, because we yeah. recorded it, I, I was I've got to admit I was of your opinion to start with. And since we've recorded these two and he's edited them down, I think they do sound better for it. I think it takes when I when I, when I know what we were talking about when we listen to it, and then when I hear what actually goes out, we don't take a lot out. But he's able to edit out that there's sometimes somebody will be talking, they'll just stop talking, and it's like you're waiting for somebody else to that, speak. And that's have to, have yeah, that mean, and stuff like that. And he's able to. It's probably two seconds that he clips out yeah. But I just think well, it sounds I, I, so I much think, better for I it. think that that's something that could be a problem. Now obviously it's just one on one just now, me, me and yourself. But if there's a group of five or six people, you might have some guests that are like they're scared, they're not sure when yeah. they should jump in and talk, and other you know because obviously you don't want to talk over each other. But the thing is, <clears throat> like if you read a, a advice about um, doing a podcast show, they'll say speak clearly, blah blah blah, and then like, don't don't speak over your guest. But at the same time. When people talk normally, they do they do talk talk over some each other yeah. sometimes because that's what you do when you're having a conversation. And I'd prefer, like one of the things I don't like about a lot of the the business shows is it's, it's too formal. It's too yeah. I we didn't want that. Almost I, I too good, really, isn't it? It's too, I know, I know too, what you mean. Too, it's like trying to be trying to be too polished. It's, yeah. it's one of them things we talked about because obviously when you get five guys on, it is a difficult thing knowing when to speak and when not to speak. And I, I think, think the, five more, the more we do. I think five is maybe getting to the point it's too many people. Well, it kind of works well for us, but it's it's just getting that comfort with each other to know when to come in. And the guys would say, "Oh, should we should we maybe have like I message open and we can message each other when I want to come in?" And I'm like, "Well, by the time it takes to do that, it's not going to be natural." And yeah, what we've just done, yeah, and there is there is there is times when two of us will go to talk at the same time or something like that. I think it's just all about being polite. You know, if somebody goes to talk, like I talked to over Anthony by accident last night, I'm like, all right, sorry mate, when you go, and he's like, no, make your point first, then I'll make mine, and, and things like that, as long as you've got that, it's it's natural, and it's not trying to be some kind of over the top, you know, well, it's, basically, it's, it's basically just, as long as the people doing it are not assholes, and they're polite enough to, <laughs> aye, it's, I mean, as in, the thing is, it's, or was it the Americans would say, don't be a douchebag, or, nah, don't be a douchebag, but it's, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, see the thing is, if you don't do it that way, but it's, it's so, you know, I mean, it, I'm conscious that I was saying to them, I don't just want it to be five guys spending a wee bit of time talking about a subject they want. There has to be interaction in it, or it's just going to, nobody's going to want to listen to it. 
the yeah. interaction is what makes it good. And, and last night's show, I was a wee bit concerned because it was broken into the, the, we've each got a league that we own kind of thing, if you like, and it was a, a review of how the season we expect the season to go. So each guy had their own division to talk about, and I was really worried that it was going to be one guy on talks about the division, then the next guy on talks about the division. But it wasn't. There was a lot of a lot of um, discussion came out of each of it right for the start, and everybody was making points about things and asking questions, and it flowed really, really well. Too well actually, because we've got a wee bit of a sort of unwritten rule. We, we try to stick to 90 minutes maximum, but we kind of run over a wee so bit. So why? Um, we we talked about this the other day that like I'm kind of of the opinion I want. It, like some of my shows are way longer than others because I'm going to have different guests and yeah. some people get different schedules. But I'm of the opinion that if my show's three hours long, then pff, it's three hours long. You know, because a lot of the the podcasts I subscribe to are, are a couple of hours long, and it's I don't mind that I put it on and I'll pause it and I'll listen to it. I'll catch up with it later. You know, you just pause it. Yeah. You, you can go to different applications and you go back to the the podcast application and it's the same. It's you know it's still with the same part and you can start listening to it or you can jump to another episode. Uh, so what was your what was the reasons for you? Doing we, it. we all discussed it, and I was kind of the opinion that it should be as long as it it, can't, it needs to be kind of thing. And the guys were like, "Well, I would rather do sort of three or four one-hour podcasts a month than do two two-hour podcasts." And I was like, "Well," and then we, we kind of worked to this runaway. I don't know, actually know what the logic was, but we said that we reckon it should be ninety minutes max. When we aim to be between seventy-five and ninety minutes. That's that's I, where we I see is a good length. I'm I'm kind of more, I lean more towards the have a minimum so that it's I mean yeah no point I have a twenty minute another, I think. yeah I think and it it, there's some there's some there's some there's in the kind of niche that I'm targeting the business was well, supposed to be the business niche. There's most of them are at least are, there's quite a lot that are only thirty minutes long, but I think thirty minutes is quite short. Ah, uh, there's, but, I mean, there's I mean, not a lot to say in thirty minutes. But uh, it's funny because well, we've been going uh, for about an hour. Well, well, I was actually going to say because. I'll just show the people on YouTube that this is my top of the range watch. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can you can see that there, um, and I've just realised how good it is because after after the stopwatch has been on for an hour, there's no evidence that you've been on for an hour. It just goes back to zero and starts over again. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually looking at that. See, that kind of been there forty five minutes. It's just no, over it's an hour then. Two minutes, two minutes. It says so. It's an hour, two minutes. But that's nineteen eighties technology for you, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't. I mean, to be honest, I, I don't mind having cheap watches. You know, I, I prefer to just have something cheap when I'm, especially when I'm travelling. You know, because it, you're always there's always a, a risk of losing something. So, I don't buy a good watch either because I'm too clumsy. I, I had I had a nice diesel watch actually, and um, it's all scratched to bits because I'm just I'm too clumsy. I don't look after things. No, it's something. Well, like when we were when we were in. Uh, because we were in the Andes for quite a few months, and and some of my friends had watches that had like you know told you the altitude and stuff, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I must admit, I was looking at them going, "That's that's pretty cool." And I told you the temperature and all that and all these, and I, I don't know, I'm I'm quite a, I'm quite sad when it comes to things like that, like for gadgets and things like that. So I was quite yeah. jealous. But um, yeah, that, I mean, this is something like, you're talking about your friend there being anal. Um, the reason the reason we started doing a podcast was like just a few days after January, my friends Kevin and Sam, they're from the north of Scotland. So we talked about doing a a podcast together, like a business podcast. And I think we've talked about a lot of different names, but I think it's going to be called Faster Mastermind, probably because they've they've got a domain registered, etc. Ready. But my friend Kevin and me were of the right. Just click the record button, do it, get it out. That's it. But my other friend was like, "No, we can do three hours, and then we'll get it down to one good hour." And I'm like, nah, <laughs> you know, it's that, like, that, that wouldn't happen. That's no. Nah. But I, I, I want to get away from the doing doing a, a show that's three hours long and then spending two hours or three hours more editing. You know, because I've, got, I've there's other things we all need to do. You know, I'm working on a book. I've got my website, so I don't want to enjoy yeah. myself as well. So I don't want to sit all day on. I mean, if something needs to be fixed, fix it. But I think. You can you can be as you say you you can be anal and just change stuff that doesn't need to be changed. You know if if for example just now if two of us just kind of sit and don't speak to each other, then it's not a huge problem really, is it? I mean yeah, for a I second know. or two. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get Andy to come on this one week with you. I think it'd be a good guy to get on and just can discuss it because his views are, he's quite, you know, as I say, he, he says, his, his opinion was, and I, I found it hard to argue with him, he said we should aspire to be the best that we can be. And I said, right, I, 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 I agree. I'm, yeah, that's, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not I'm, I can't really argue with that. And he said, he basically we finished the podcast about 10 o'clock, well, about quarter past 10 on Tuesday night. I think Andy went to his bed about five in the morning. Basically sat up and edited it all down and added in the music and cut in a, he cut in a couple of we we haven't it done before, but he cut in a couple of bits of commentary from the the baseball and stuff like that, which was pretty cool. And um, he sat he done it all of his own accord and the the, the the finished article I've got to admit when you listen to it, it sounds really really good. There's no there's no any crap in it. There's no any dead air. There's no any. I I, I think it's for anybody to listen to it. They're listening to it and they're not having to put up with any other stuff, and I think there's a certain amount of merit in that. But yeah, definitely. It's, it's I mean, a lot, and, and, it's a lot of work. and I've got and I've got a lot of admi- admiration for people that can do that, you know, as yeah. well. But I don't know if I don't know. I mean, I, I just think if, if unless something's a, a really major mistake, you know, something really big, yeah. like someone splits out something crazy racist Aye, or something. Some, gonna, some like, like, you know, there's like a, yeah. if I email someone to be a guest in my show and then they'll say something crazy, I'm like, um, yeah, anyway, hello. Like, maybe take that one out there. You know, <laughs> but I, I think I, I think if I don't know, I mean, I, I, I quite like. I, I just I, it's maybe it's maybe because the shows that I'm listening to are more kind of they just click the record button and yeah, but, and and then they'll record it and then they'll they'll upload it. But I, I think. A lot of the guys that are doing these shows and, and just doing it live, they're professionals. There's no way. There's no. I mean, they are professionals. Like the the, the ones that I'm they're listening to the comedians. I mean, they talk in front of us, hundreds of people every night. They're obviously comfortable yeah. doing that, and that's yeah. it's it's a skill. It's a it's a really good skill. So I, I can see where your friend uh, Andy's coming from, but I, I'm I'm kind of swaying more towards the <laughs> recording and like for for example this one. The second this is finished, the show is uploaded to YouTube, and then once it's there, I'll download it and I'll upload it to iTunes. You know, yeah. and I, mean, I, I don't want to mess about with different things unless if, if I think the beginning and end, like we talked about this as well, the um, the intro is something you need to do correctly. Yeah, it's but once you get the intro out of the way, and you know, and then at the end, the outro, you have to, you have to say right, see you next episode, and all that kind of thing. Uh, our, our first podcast, I've got to admit, kind of finished as if we were hang, hanging up a call, and that was one of the things Andy had to do because it was just basically like, right, guys, see you later, and they're all like, see you later, see you later, see you later, and Andy had to do it basically me just saying, right, see you later, and cut everything else out of it, which yeah. I've got to admit, it did sound better because when I think back to what we said, and then you hear it recorded, it did sound yeah. better. Yeah, I think is, the, I mean, the bigger, beginning and end is something you should probably check when you're doing a podcast. Um, yeah. I just I don't want to I really don't want to spend hours looking at because effectively the only way to 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 effectively edit a podcast is to listen to all of it and then once well, you, you pause to, it and then go back so that that's if you've got a two hour podcast that's minimum two hours editing but realistically three that's four hours four hours right we went we went from one hour forty two and we put it out at one hour thirty five. So okay. we lost a fair bit. That there was a, a a chunk of that was basically Andy thinking that it wasn't recording. There was at least three minutes of that was Andy thinking it wasn't recording. It was recording, so that had to be removed. Um, so there was there wasn't a lot that we cleaned up out of it, but we did take a, some bits and bobs out here and there. It it just sounds better for it. It sounds it's it's as it I've got to admit. I mean, there's one sort of hail 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 me down speaker. There's various podcasters like Homeboys. It's recorded live. And then you've got the Kaluk Shamrock um, Celtic Supporters Club do one. Now the Kaluk Shamrock's pre-recorded, and I've got to admit, I used to listen to like Homeboys and um, Mets Boys and the Kaluk Shamrock one when I got the train to work. And on my phone, listening in my headphones and my phone, some of the Homeboys and Mets Boys ones, it was really difficult to hear people. Really, yeah, really okay. difficult to hear people when you're listening when you're on the train, and it got a bit annoying. You know, you're kind of pushing the head, the earphones right into your ears to try and hear certain guys talking. I think, I think, um, like well, when I get back to UK, obviously I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try and get a professional microphone with earphones and get it all done professionally. But I, just now, I've just got a, it. Just makes more sense to have a, a travel headset. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I Andy, Andy records ours down on a garage band on his Mac. 
mm-hmm. rec- records it down on a garage band, and then he'll play about, do whatever editing he's doing on there, and then it gets uploaded through a speaker. But the Kaluk Shamrock one, they pre record it, and I think they pre record it using one of the little sort of, um, like, it's like a little recording device. You get maybe yeah, like the like portals with the, the, hand, the, hand, like yeah, the handheld, the handheld thing. thing. I think they do it with that. Now that means that they, their sound quality isn't obviously as good um, because they're not all on headsets, but it still works pretty well. But always on the train, you could hear them quite clearly. You could hear everybody. Everybody was of a certain similar level on their podcast because they they gather in a room round about a table and record it, which was was pretty good. And I, I always, whenever I listen to them, I always was it the opinion that theirs was the be- easiest to listen to on the train for that reason. So there is that to consider as well if people are yeah, The thing is, I, I'm saying I should do it without editing it, but when I download this, the audio is terrible. Yeah, you <laughs> probably got that. <laughs> it's it's one of the things. Again. You know, we have to do it again. I, I, I can um, hear you perfect, and I think hopefully you can hear me, because this, this certainly worked well last well, night on, um, on Skype. I mean, I did, I did a pretty simple test. Was What I, what I did was... I found a few Google Hangout videos on YouTube, and I just ripped the audio from them and then listened to them. And the audio seemed good. The audio seemed yeah. good to me. So I'm hoping this that the audio will be good on this too. Um, it's it's it, the application I'll probably be using is Audio City. It's a Windows based one. Yeah, Audio City. Audio City. Um, I don't really know much about it, but the one thing I would do when editing it is improve the audio. If there's something you can raise level or even it out or I'll, I'll probably do that, but that's something. I mean, I'm not want to be cutting and pasting and removing and. But I, I, I mean, I, it's one of those things. That, another thing I was going to talk about with my friend um, is intros and outros. I mean, people have different views on that too. You know, it's it's common in business shows to do like a one and like a ninety second intro with music, and it's like welcome to the show, and all that. You know, and it's, yeah. it's is it necessary? I don't know. I don't know if it is. I've got to admit, I am. Um, it, uh, it does make it more professional, but I think I think a shorter intro is better. But yeah. it depends. You know, if you've got a three-hour show, a thirty-second intro is nothing. But if your show's only thirty minutes and two minutes of the song at the start, it's it's kind of overkill. We 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 use about a minute fifteen <laughs> of a song that just happens to be about bass called "Load Up the Bases" that we found, and it's quite a funky wee tune, and um. I've got to admit, see that hour, that minute fifteen. See when I'm listening to the podcast myself, listening back, it does my head in. It just yeah. seems like it goes on for so long, and um, it's one of the things I might speak to Andy and see if we can maybe cut it down a wee bit. But the well, problem that's, is, that's, that's was something I was wanting to speak to other people about and get their opinion. But the the reason, like I, I did, there's not really much discussion about. It. I know it's, it's kind of a you you can imagine why there's not much discussion. It's not an important thing to talk about. But like if you search for do you like intros or do you like outros on YouTube or podcasts? There's not really many articles about it. And yeah. a few people say it's basically anything more than 10 seconds, cut it. Just, it's too much, you know. You, there's people on YouTube and they've got like a three minute video and the first 90 seconds is like a song. And it's just oh, it's pointless. Crazy. But what, one, of the, one of the best, there's, there's, a, there's a, a YouTube guy I subscribe to. He's called, he's called the Angry, Angry Video Game Nerd. If people who, who like video games have probably heard of him. He, he reviews the fat guy that goes mental. No, no, no. no. He's called. I think his username is James Nintendo Nerd. He's a, he comes across as a really nice guy. He reviews old Nintendo games and stuff. But his 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 videos are normally ten minute long, ten minutes long. But the first minute is uh his song, and the like video intro. Yeah. And it didn't bother me at all. But see, after I started watching a few more episodes. Every time I just click to the one minute mark and skip it yeah, because it, it does. There's no point. You've heard it. You've seen it. You know it is. So I think that's why for my YouTube videos and for the podcast, I'm swaying towards not adding an intro or music or. I don't. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not set on it. I'm, I'm willing to change my mind on this. You know, it's not something I've. I've got a really strong opinion of. But at the moment, I'm swaying more towards. I think not 30 great. seconds is good. We, we, as I say, one of the things that annoys me is I generally listen to the podcast on my phone. Um, yeah. I stream it through um, my phone in my car. General listening to it then, <coughs> and it's uh, it's difficult to to get to an exact time on your phone when you're scrolling through. Yeah, you don't such a small f- screen, so I can never get it to sc- scroll to a minute in. So I just have to listen to it. And I've got to admit, a minute and fifteen what, seconds does what seem. What phone is it forever. you've got, Justin? What phone is it you've got? Uh, Galaxy Galaxy S two. 
Oh, that's a big phone as well, isn't it? That's like, what is that, 4.5 inch screen or something? Or? Uh, that's about that, I think it is. But it's just, it's just because of the, the, it's not easy when you're scrolling along like that. Even on the iPad, I find it quite difficult to yeah, pick yeah. An, ex an exact time. And you're only trying to go a minute into a show that's an hour and a half. It's, you've not got much to move it. So I end up having to listen to it. But I've got to admit, um, I mean, Harper for me, it's boys when he came on with us first said, if you're recording live, always have your, your music at the start because it gives you one last wee minute or two just to I am not any creases are in just before you go live, which is probably a fair thing because I've yeah, right yeah, that's going, that's yeah. a good point. It's, I mean, as I say, it's like you're the veteran here, Kev. <laughs> you've got, <laughs> I wouldn't you've say got, that, you've, mate. You've got two episodes under your belt, but uh, <laughs> I mean, Harp, Harp probably was saying the day he's done a hundred podcasts, so he is he is an expert on yeah. it. Um, but it's one of them things. I I don't know. I, I'm I'm more comfortable at the moment we are recording, but we have got an idea to do at least two live specials throughout the year, so we are going to have to try the live thing on Spreaker yeah. and put it, out, put it out there live, so we'll, there will be some warts and all ones getting out there, but we're going to wait till we're a little bit more comfortable with it and see if we'll get people interested in joining us if we do a live show, then we'll do it. I the think, I is, think once, once, once you, the forum's established, if you can get a few hundred people to your episode, that would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, you've got to wonder how many people are actually listening to it live as well. I mean, I listened to one Mets Boys show live, and I was on one, and then after that, every single other one of them I downloaded and listened to on the train on the way to work, and that's the way most people were doing it, so you've you got this extra pressure of doing it live, um, if anything goes wrong, and you're not really achieving that much, because there isn't that many people listening to it live, so... No, it kind of, I, mean, kind I think, of I think it's good way. live if, you, if you've got a big audience, a lot of blog viewers, a lot of you know yeah. people in the forum, then it's beneficial. But the thing is, like this is going out live, and all future episodes will will be live in the sense that it'll be, you can view it on YouTube. But there's no, I don't the the, the way if I, I did, if I did a set time every week, say that this time the show will be on at this time, then yeah. I think I would start getting more viewers, live viewers. But it's not practical because no, different not. guests. Different guests have different schedules, and diff you know it, it's better if there's any problems you can work out, and then just when you when you're on live, just post it on Twitter, I'm on live, and then get a few viewers. It's just it's just trying to get everything together at the same time. I mean, we we aim to try and do ours on a Sunday, just because the guys all work different crazy shifts. Gary's permanent nights, Andy's um, back shift because he's like a um, he does like headline writing and stuff for a newspaper and photo editing and all that kind of stuff, and then. Um, Mark's an odds compiler for a um, one of the gambling companies over here. That's quite, that's quite an interesting job. Yeah. Uh, as well, Gary, Gary, so um, and Gary's permanent nights, and then me and Anthony are, are during the day. We work no, normal shifts, so he's trying to pull everything together. It's a nightmare yeah. week, and and we ended up recording on Tuesday this time instead of the Sunday because I was just back from America and there was a few other things going on. So. It's like you say, trying to get a set date. If you, I mean, if you had a set time, you know, eight o'clock every Tuesday night, you were going live. Then you might get people that'll be like, right, it's eight o'clock on Tuesday. I'm going to listen to that. But hmm. when you're you're doing it a bit here and scare them as we are, and doing it when you can, you, you can't expect people to drop in and be there to listen to you. So you're not you're not really achieving much by doing it live that way, unless you get a big following and loads of people. Then the good thing with doing it live is that you add to the show by getting interaction and getting people calling in. You know, you got yeah. other people on the show live, and it changes the dynamic of the show. And you know, we had a couple of emails this week, which was pretty sweet, and made a bit of chat. So that that that's getting other people involved, and that's what makes people want to listen more if they're they're getting talked about on the show and stuff like that. But um, at, for us at the moment, until we get more popular, I don't see any benefit to going live. Not not with the way you're doing it through speaker and through Skype, etc. There's no there's no benefit. Yeah. Um, the, so what what format? Do you guys use like you were saying that there's five of you? So, how 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 is bases loaded? What's the kind of structure? Are you are you the are you the the senior vice president, junior vice president? Was the <laughs> I'm I'm calling myself the host. No, I, I, it was agreed at the start. I was the kind of guy that pulled it together. Um, it was it was sort of me that pulled the team together, and it was. Um, I'm not saying it was my baby by any stretch of the imagination. It was Gary that really talked me into getting my finger out and doing it. But Gary was like. I think we should do it, but I think you should do it, and I'm like, right, okay. Yes. Um, spoke to Mark, and Mark's like, I, I think we should do it as well. So um, it, it kind of ended up landing on my shoulders to be the one that was um, 
that was that was sort of driving it. And then I got Andy involved because I knew Andy could bring a lot to it. Plus he's a baseball nut, and he used to talk to me all the time about baseball. So I pulled him into it, and thank God I did because Andy's been a godsend. He's the amount of work he's put in and the the internet side on the editing side and all that kind of stuff has has been brilliant. But I, I guess I kind of host it, so I'm the, the first voice you hear and the last voice you hear, and I kind of try and keep it moving along. Um, we don't have a well, we didn't have a set format. The first week we done it was an introduction to who we are and how we get into baseball, and that was basically what it was about. And then a little bit about how we thought our teams were going to fare. Um, the set after we done the first show and we seen how it went, we had a bit of discussion, and I had come up with this idea that there's five of us, there's six divisions in baseball. Five, four of the five of us support a team, uh, different teams from one division. Mm -hmm. So the idea was that the five of us take one of the other divisions. So we all own a division now that is now the AL East. So we've all got a, a division that, and we've got to basically own that division. So we've got to, every show we do, we've got to have a run through how who's winning, who's losing, how it's going, and that's what we've done. So like last a, week, a, a kind of news update. Basically, yeah, it just means that, that it, rather than us just talking about the, our own teams all the time, we're talking about the whole sport and we're covering everybody's division. So if anybody's listening in that's a, a Giants fan, for instance, I've got that division, or a Dodgers fan, I cover that division. If they're like a Mets fan, then Mark covers that division. And last week we done a, basically a preview of the season of how we think each divi our division is going to go and we had a bit of discussion on it. It went quite well, it was good. Next week, the next show that we're doing, which hopefully should be next week, is um, the American League because there's National League and American League so Anthony and um, I think it's uh, Andy have still got to do their, their two previews of their two leagues and then last we all support that team in the ALE so we'll do the ALE last but it's, that, that's going to be the format throughout the season. That, what you were talking about there um, you talked about previously with um, the radio phone in uh, like people calling in, that's something I think would be fantastic. Like it's so obviously that's perfect for your show because once you get more viewers and you get more subscribers, you're going to have people who listen every week to every episode. Now, obviously, base is loaded. It's it's focused on Europe, but you you can get people from all over the world to to phone up and take part. And so, I mean, is this something? Do you plan on with bases loaded from a business point of view? Do you just plan on? Can you target in the American market, target in Australia, or, or just the whole world? Uh, or we have kind of set it up basically as a, aimed at the the UK and Ireland side, if you like, at the European side, the wrong side of the pond, as we kind of sometimes like to term it. Mm. Um, the reason for that being is that if you, I mean, there's a multitude of podcasts on baseball in America. Mm -hmm. The problem with the podcasts in America is that they tend to be quite involved and they tend to be a little bit up themselves, if you like. Now, you get really good informational ones like the Baseball Today podcast and stuff like that. It's done with some what they call beat writers over there, and it's really informative about your certain teams and that kind of stuff. We wanted to just have basically guys for this side of the pond who either are learning the game, know a bit about the game, various levels of knowledge of the game, but never really have anybody to speak to about it over here. That's the kind of target we, the target audience we're aiming at. And we actually think it's bigger than we first imagined. We reckon there's more people in the UK who are into baseball than, than maybe we'd first thought. And when you look at it, I mean, there's there's there's, there's a five of us, four of us from Scotland, one is from Ireland. But, I mean, the way the Twitter's exploded so far and things are going on, I think we're going to appeal to a decent broad spectrum of people. It's just folk finding out about us. Mm -hmm. For for the benefit of people who are not from the UK, then one of the um, one of the ways that a lot of people started watching baseball in the UK was the show on Channel Five. It was um, it? that that's that's how I started watching baseball. I mean, I'm not a fanatic. I've I've been to a couple of different games in America. I think I've been to been to Boston, and been to Chicago Cubs, and I've been to the Yankees. Um, but I'm not a fanatic. But the reason I got uh, started watching baseball late was well. Because I'm, I used to be like a night or still, I'm a little bit a night owl. I'd be up well, late. We were all students at the time, weren't we? And you had you didn't yeah. your life then because yeah. you weren't getting up in the morning. So the Sunday night game, I, I, particularly for me, I had a, a Monday night, a Monday morning off college, so we were able to watch the Sunday night game live, which was, was on it, about three what in the morning. What was the name of the host again? It was Jonathan. Uh, Johnny Gold. Johnny Gold, yeah, Johnny Gold. Um, uh, Josh. But it, it was a, it was a really good show though because they broke down things for for beginners. Um, and 
people from America who are listening to this, they'll kind of laugh because obviously, if you're not gr if you've not grown up in America, like what team do you support? And I remember the um, one of the guys, like they had like a, a kind of question and answer section where people would send in letters or emails and and ask something. And someone says, "What team do you support?" And he says, "Well, why don't you just support the the first teams you watch? Why not pick that?" And obviously, they would do like in baseball, there's a series of games, and the first few games I saw were all the Mets, and then the next few games were all the um, was the Boston Red Sox. So I just said, "Okay, I'll support Boston Red Sox and the Mets." Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm hardly a fanatic. I'm hardly a no, fan. That, do like, you know what? Respect, but I think I think that's I think that's a good way though, because I'm, I don't I don't like from a you know glory hunting kind of view. I think it's good to support the team. And one one of the reasons that what, what was the name of that picture years ago? Um, you know the picture the um, the catcher for Mets with the fantastic the, yeah, the crazy. Piazza with the, with yeah, the Mauser, right, but he was Piazza. a great, he was a great he was a great hitter as well. Ah, uh, Piazza was awesome. Yeah, should have got in the Hall of Fame this year, but that's for another story. But, but yeah, I mean, see, to be honest, all the guys on that show have all got a similar story. Ch Chambi or Tony is, is is a mate of ours. He first his first game he watched it was Indians, and the Indians won, and now he's an Indians fan. My story's slightly different. I kind of started watching them. I liked the Yankees because I liked a few of the players in their team, but I wasn't. I would. I would never call myself a supporter. I went to America and. My mate's gran lived there, and she was married to an American guy. And we went out and we stayed in their house for a few days before we went to New York City. And he was a huge Yankees fan, so I started sitting watching the games with him, get more into it. Then we went to the city and went to a Yankees game. And as soon as I'd been to a game, that was me hooked. I, I loved the whole atmosphere. Come home, get right into the history of the team, and then that was me, a Yankees fan. Mm -hmm. um, Gary was on holiday in Rhode Island or somewhere like that. And um, he was talking to a guy in a bar, and the guy says, "Oh, my son's playing baseball. Do you want to come and watch the game?" He went, and the guy was a, a Red Sox fan. So he went and watched the game with the guy, and the guy was telling him about the Red Sox. He's not a Red Sox fan. It's just uh, Andy's. Andy's. See that, um, see that makes my story sound really bad because I just picked two teams I saw on no, TV. No, no, but that's quite a lot. But, but I think I think that's good though. I think that's Chambi good. Chambi did that. Chambi's first team. The first team he seen was was uh, was the Indians, and he's an Indians fan. That's what he supports. Andy, I think. Had went on holiday to Canada and bought a Toronto's Blue Jay top or a thing, or somebody. I think somebody maybe went to Canada and bought him a top or a hat. He kind of liked them. Then he went to Canada on holiday, and went to see them. Now he's a, a Toronto Blue Jays fan. It's mm. just uh, most of the people in the UK don't really have a, a solid reason for the team to support. They never grew up. They don't have family supporting them or anything like that. So they've just kind of gravitated towards a team because probably because they watched them or they liked them or they liked something to do with them. So. It is, it's one of them things. I mean, your football team, you tend to be grown into it. You, you tend yeah, to from your, family, your family, for your family, for uncles and dads yeah, and stuff. That kind of stuff. So uh, it, for us, it's not like that. And I suppose it's the same for Americans that are into like English soccer or anything like that. You know, if they're watching and they start, I know the English soccer is becoming really big in America now. Um, they, they won't have a team that they've, they've got a reason to support, so they'll pick a team because they, they've watched them or they like them or because they back them or whatever. You know, there's these, these are the things. So it's just no different. It's no different. Yeah. Another thing um, to go back to bases loaded. Now, on your site, one part we've not talked about yet is you've got a blog. Um, how often do you guys plan on updating it? Um, you've got. I just saw there. You've got like the the first article was from like a week or so ago. Yeah, that was me that done that one. You may get mentioned in that actually. Yeah, um, I saw that. <laughs> the what you call it? The, the the plan is that there's five of us in the team, so if we do one a week as a plan. The second one hasn't went up yet. There's there a few reasons for that. I was away in America and stuff like that, and just trying to keep everybody. I've been kind of pulling everything together for it, but I believe the second one's been done at the moment. I think Andy's doing the second one and it should be going up and I've, I've gave the guys a nudge to get something put together. So there should be one a week from each of so there should be a blog going up every week. Okay. How often do you suggest you do them like? It's um I think I think the best thing is to be consistent. You know, I, you can be you can be um a regular if you want, but I, I think well, one of the one of the mistakes that a lot of beginner bloggers makes uh, um, is what they'll do is they'll start a blog. Like obviously this website's got a forum, it's got podcasts, it's lots, it's got a lot of different things. But when they start a blog, what they'll do is they'll be so enthusiastic, they'll they'll work like crazy. They'll do like a post every single day for like 
two or three weeks and then they'll completely burn out yeah, and then we'll they'll do like live. once every month you know yeah, yeah. like people people who read a blog kind of get used to the frequency that that, that that articles are published so it's much better to I mean realistically I mean the, the more the more you the post the better because you've got more articles on the search engines but it's more about quality really ah, you know, it's so. better, rather than do three small posts you're better to have one really good article but uh, yeah. uh, I mean blogging's a whole different ball game it's something you could speak uh, about for hours you know it, it's, it's I think it's a good comp a compliment to your forum because you need reasons for the search engines to come to your site yeah and, and crawl your data and, and if you're if you're constantly updated with new new information and new pages then Google and different search engines and spiders are going to come up come to your website and then index it and then there's a chance someone will be searching for the results of a game um, I mean, if you, if you if you could put in the resources I don't know, to kind of risk, write reviews of games and stuff, you're going to have people who Google the game and they'll find your website and then read it. But you know, the, the problem, the big big problem with that in terms of baseball is that there's 162 games a season yeah. for each team, so it's 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 so intense. And I mean, there's there's sometimes we'll play two games in a day. So to, to try and keep on top of that would just be an enormous amount of work. Well, I'm not saying we can't, but maybe uh, we should do a, week, a weekly review or something. I, th or? I think, um, like, obviously, the, the discussion forum, I, I would say, is going to be the heart of your site. It's going to be the heart of the website, yeah, really. I think so, um, yeah. Um, and it, as it grows, you're going to have more people posting on it. So when you get to, I mean, if you've got thousands of people posting, then if you're wanting fresh content every day and you don't have the time to update the blog, then I'd be swaying more towards... What you do is like make one of the forums update on the homepage, so that yeah. whenever and then what you could do is you could have lots of people from the forum chip in and contribute. Yeah. And posts and stuff. But at the same time, you could you could just hire them or or just work with them directly and get them to sign up to the blog and just become like news posters. Yeah, yeah. And, and what they can do is they can they can update um, the homepage whenever they want to. They can write opinion posts and if the the website is generating money. Um, then you could also pay them, but I mean, you'll probably get a lot of people who's fanatical about the site that they're happy to help out. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a bad idea. Is it somewhere annoying if we get enough members? Is like we we pick somebody that supports each team or something like that and say, right, you, your job is to update the results in a wee bit about each game mm -hmm. when it happens and stuff like that, and then at least it gives somebody a purpose, and then if that helps. That so uh, I've used, I mean. It's kind of refreshing to hear that obviously you, all of the guys that are involved in, in launching this website, it's really because you're passionate about it. baseball and you're passionate about like, getting the website launched and talking to other people with the same interest. But have you thought about how you're going to monetize the website in the future? No, I haven't even considered that at all, if I'm being honest. We kind of set it up and we were hoping that it might get to a stage where we put some money in at the moment to pay for Spreaker and some different other things. We we're hoping it might generate enough cash to cover them costs, if you like. We haven't considered anything further than that at the moment. Yeah, I think I think long term, you're going to have a lot of different ways you can monetize the site. You've got the blog, you've got sponsors for the podcast, you've got the forum, you've got different things that you can do. But I think you'll probably reach a point where you kind of should run it like a business if you want it yeah. to grow, because if not, it's kind of, you know what I mean, it, there'll become a point where, not that the forum won't grow anymore, but if if hosting costs go up, if you want to be, if you want to get more important people to the uh, to the website, if you want to offer gifts, do competitions for people, and review products, and all that, all these different things, it's, it's better to get sponsors, or to be able to generate some income, I mean, e yeah. even if it's just a matter of adding Google AdSense to the forums, if you want, you know, yeah, that's probably that's probably a good point. It would be nice if somewhere down the line we could get to the stage where the the forum was in a situation where it had enough people in it that you could start doing some crazy things like doing competitions to win stuff and trying to get maybe tickets off of teams and get the teams involved and seeing if we can, you know, you could do something through like you've got a thing called StubHub in the US. If somebody's traveling over to there, it's a good way to pick up tickets. There might be some way we could do an incorporation with that that people could find tickets for games through it. Mm -hmm. Things that would be beneficial to the members, if you like. So I think that stuff like that would definitely consider further down the line. But the the thing is, you you're, the site doesn't have to be making much money to get uh, products for competitions. Uh, if you if you guys are getting a lot of traffic, just approach baseball related companies and say, listen, 
would you want to do offer some free gifts to our fans and you know obviously they'll get links to their website they'll get a little yeah. bit of promotion and it's in their best interest to do that like I'm not sure if there's any digital products is digital products are the easiest ways to get to get to get free products given for competitions because it, it costs them nothing to send an ebook or yeah, or a subscription yeah. to a membership website. Uh, that's what I was thinking, like MLB TV and things like that. Is, yeah, that, the, that, is, that, the, is that the official website? Yeah, basically MLB TV is brilliant. MLB TV is, we subscribe to it and you get it on your iPad or whatever and, and you can watch any game you want. You can watch a condensed game. You get all interviews with the players. MLB own the um, rights to the TV for every single ch every single TV. Um, Team every, every game, every game, every game, every team. Now, the teams all have their own. The, the teams all have their own networks. Um, so they all have their own networks. I mean, the money in baseball is ridiculous. The Dodgers just signed something like a three billion pound, was a seven mm. billion uh, dollar deal or something for their TV rights. It's crazy with the money. But MLB have like if, if you were in the San Francisco area, you would have a blackout on the, the Giants. You couldn't watch a Giants game in there because it's on their own network. But if you're mm. anywhere else in the country, you can watch it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for us. I can watch any game because we're out with the blackout zones. But for instance, if you were in New York and you had MLB TV, you can't watch the Yankees game live because it'll be on, yes, their own network. So it's a bit like that. But MLB TV is phenomenal. It's like about 80, 80 or 90 quid it works out for us to subscribe to it for a year. Okay. They actually, they actually do something similar with the English Premiership. Um, like, how many, like, how many games do they show in English Premiership football? It's like two on a Sunday, is it? And one on a Monday night, but yeah. if you're if you're in Asia somewhere, for example Malaysia or Singapore or Thailand, you can you can watch literally every game that's every on. Single well, pretty game much. I mean, there's a lot of pubs that, that show them illegally, but the, even the official subscriptions you have you have like five games in a row on a Saturday, and they just yeah. don't show that many in the UK. So if it's actually were, better to watch it <laughs> abroad. Well, uh, if you were to have like a a motorized satellite dish and a a system called a Dreambox and an internet connection in the UK. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm saying that I do have one of that, but <laughs> um, they, you can watch just about every single game live on that. Um, it's it's Al Jazeera. You can pick up all these different channels that, and you can select any game you want to watch live in the Premiership. I remember, so I remember years ago there was a lot of a couple of years ago there was a lot of pubs and they were showing football through Polish channels. I think. Yeah, well, basically, what happened is um, one of the it was a woman from Scotland actually taken um, Sky taking her to court, and she's basically decided to go to court over it. Um, in England, it get, didn't get deemed illegal, so there's a bit of fight going on at that at the moment. To, she was paying a subscription to a Polish TV channel to show the games live, and Sky basically took her to court over it. And that's is, is sorry, did, she, did she own a pub? Yep, the Scottish uh, one still to go to court under Scottish law, but the English one went to court and the person won, the pub won the rights to show it because they were paying and Sky didn't really have the due restriction to do that. So, so where, the, um, how recent is this? This is. I think that was last year that happened. It was quite a tale because I remember something bigger. Like for people who don't know, in the UK it's, it's um, the the television network Sky has kind of got, not a monopoly, the, the, they've, kind of, they've had to kind of break up but they've kind of got a monopoly a little bit on football. So if you've got a pub and you want to show football, which is where most people, if they're leaving the house to go watch football, that's where they'll go. Then they'll. It's quite expensively, you know. Like I don't know, what is it like forty, fifty pounds per person in a house? But a rest, uh, a hotel, a restaurant, or something, or hotel Pubs, would have to three pay grand. three thousand, like a year or a, a month or what? I think it's a about year. three grand a year or something like that. It's, it's a lot of money anyway. It's thousands of pounds. Definitely. I mean, especially with. I mean, obviously, the the pubs has been hit over the last few years with the smoking ban and things like that, and getting less people going to watch the football. So you you can't blame the women for trying to get it cheaper. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's, Sky Sky have kind of had it their own way in the UK in terms of the the football thing, and they've had a monopoly on it almost. I know there's other channels have got games, but they've got the main games and the the key games, and they are the big the big player, but. Yeah, I mean, you can't blame them. At the end of the day, she's, she, her argument was she paid a, subscri a subscription to watch that TV, and this guy have probably sublet that channel, that feed out to the Polish TV anyway. So, I don't know, but it never get deemed illegal anyway, so there's a bit of a battle going on over that at the moment in the courts. Yeah, I mean, one thing that's going to be in in the news in the, in the next year or so is the television lens, because I think it expires in 2016, and it's, it's 
the most outdated, stupidest the TV platform. license thing. Yeah, I know it is, it but is. I love the, I love the BBC. I think the BBC provide an amazing service, and this is a problem that's going to come up out of it all. I think the BBC's online content is phenomenal. I think BBC iPlayer is. But way the ahead thing is, the, the, but their, their online content is monetized. You know, I, I read the BBC website every day, and it's one of my favorite websites. But outside of the UK, there's advertisements on it. Yeah, of so, course. And I mean, the BBC, bring, the BBC does bring in money. It brings in money abroad. It brings in, you know, Top Gear. People moan about the, oh, look at the amount of money they've spent making Top Gear. But they sell Top Gear to about 250 countries or something. Makes them a fortune. From the, like the, article, the article that I read, I'm sure BBC Worldwide makes up 30% of their budget. Yeah. And then they get, I think, another 20 to 30% comes from the government. And then the rest of it is. Um, from subscriptions, from people paying the license. Well, I say subscriptions. You can't opt in. It's. I yeah, mean, yeah, I, I'm. I'm basically. I'm. I'm very against the, the BBC license. I feel very strongly against it. Um, I can let you in I, a wee secret on here, but it's probably gone live. I get um, took to court for no paying my TV license. Well, I don't. Well, see, the thing is, I bet you know you're not legally required to actually go. Well, do you know what happened? Not, do you know what? If they send you the letter, you don't actually. You only have to pay in. if you turn up. Well, no, they got in my door by, they were quite sneaky the way they got in my door, and then that was the start of the proceedings, but I never went to court, I got a letter in, I never paid my TV licence for three years, and I got fined 130 quid. Well, Which, for the people who don't understand this, is in the UK they charge a, a licence for anyone to watch TV, whether you watch the BBC or not, and it's uh, at the moment I think it's £145, so a effectively, a, a year, yeah, Thanks. and for... Effectively, for you not paying for three years, they charged you one year. <laughs> yeah, less than a year. So, well, here that was it. The, the the reason this is in my mind is because basically I, I don't watch television uh, really at all. I don't I don't in the house. I watch I watch um, like things on YouTube. I watch movies and I play games. Play like a PlayStation. So I didn't I didn't get a BBC license because I don't use it at all. Yeah, so yeah. when I moved in my house. I was like, they they start sending really threatening letters saying they're yeah. going to take you to court and stuff. I'm like, what the, f you know, why should I have to give? Why am I getting threatened by people when I don't even use their service? It's really it's something. No, I don't it's, a, it's a, such an outdated way of doing it. What they're actually want to do is just find a way to tax us on it and take it out of people's income tax or something like that. And less but the thing is, no, but I, I, I don't, don't, I don't think do. so. I don't think I anyone don't who pays. BBC. I don't think I, I don't think we should. We should, I hope we don't lose the BBC, but I don't. It's a very outdated system. I mean, this the B, live TV licenses were used in like thousands of countries. Well, thousands of um, I'll say thousands. I don't know why I'm saying thousands. They were used in dozens of different countries around the world, especially in the Commonwealth, like in Australia and Canada, New Zealand. And these these countries all removed the licenses like in the seventies because they knew the system was outdated. But the problem is. Even if you're taxing it, you're taxing people who might not even use this use the service, which is wrong. Now, uh, the, I, do well, I, I don't I don't agree with it simply because I don't like the way that they send letters. Now, the reason they can actually walk in in the UK, they have what's called an implied right of access. Now, that means that anyone is legally allowed to walk onto your property. For example, the postman is allowed to go and put mail in your mailbox. Someone like a Jehovah's Witness is allowed to trap your door and say, "Hey, you know." Talk about here's a, Jesus. Here's a wave tower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, what I did, I just, I just said, listen, I refuse. I, I re um, retract your implied right of access. You're not permitted to enter my um, property. And they just sent a letter saying, we acknowledge your, um, you acknowledge your letter. Blah blah blah. And, and but the thing is, they end it with all this annoying text about we can still legally check you using. License detectors, which is the biggest lie ever created. Yeah. They don't exist. They can't check. You know, it's a, but um, they've got these silly vans with silly satellite dishes on top of them, kidding on. They can't. They can't, they people, can't do it. They can't do it. I, know. I mean, I'd love to have an argument with one of these license guys and just say, okay, check if there's a light, uh, if there's an aerial there. Check, you know, yeah. and see what they said because it, it's just a lie. I don't know how they can get round this. Where they can, where the government Pe lets them lie stupid. to people. But people are stupid, aren't they? So they just play on that stupidity. Well, the reason the reason I'm talking about it again is, like back in the UK, my mum will go over and check my mail, um, and basically when you reject, when you uh, retract their implied rate of license, you're you're retracting it forever. But what they do is go two years, and then two years later you'll to start the getting all these. To yeah, the householder you'll, again. You'll start getting no. They'll, they'll basically put on the system two years, and two years later they'll they'll start 
um, um, sending more threatening letters. Now, my mum's obviously, she's a pensioner. She's getting worried about this. She's like, oh, but, but you, you, she's getting really worried that something's going to happen to me or I'm going to be taken to court. I was like, mum, I'm doing nothing wrong. Legally, they're not allowed to step onto my property. And for one, I don't even use television. So, But why okay. should I spend more time paying for stamps and go out my way to write letters and print them out to send it to them again and say, stop threatening me with these letters? You know, the so trick is, the actual trick when is I get just... back, when I get back, I'm going to have. I mean, I've been away for a year and a half. Well, I, I come back to Scotland for two months, so when I get back, I'll be like a year's worth of letters from them. Yeah, you know, from the, the, from the, the trick is, if you, if, you, if you ignore them, if you ignore them, you, 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 you're, you're more threatening, more threatening letters. Somebody will try and come to your house, and then if you just ignore them, it'll go right back to the start, and then they'll, 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 they'll just but send the original letter not, again. They're not allowed to actually come into my property, so they're not allowed to even yeah. shut my door. They're not well, allowed to be... walk through my driveway. If they, the minute they walk through my driveway, they've broke the law, and I'm allowed to take them to court. Aye. So it's... the amount of money, the amount of money they must waste chasing license fees, but it, Apparently, it must cost from them what I've read, way they, more. I read a thing because when my mum emailed me about, uh, said there was a letters about it. I checked. I was reading an article about it, and I'm sure I read. They sent out something. It's between twenty-five and thirty-five million letters it's per crazy. year. That's crazy. Every year, they're, like they're sending out thirty million letters every year, so that's thirty million people they're threatening every year. I know it's crazy. If they just if they took one p a month tax off of people or something, they would probably be better off. But anyway, but no, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just one of these things. I, the only thing that worries me if it does go is that the BBC becomes populated with adverts in the UK as well, and I think that'd be a great shame. Here, here's here's something that a lot of people don't actually realise, right? The BBC is actually set up for advertisements. Now, yeah. bet between every single between every single uh, program on the BBC, there's a break of a few minutes. Like every show, for example, eight to eight thirty CE standards on. It's filmed as if it's uh, as if there's an advert in between. Yeah, and well, then, then they have a trailer for something that's coming on and stuff. Yes. Like that. So what they do is they do self prom promotional things, but for other countries, if th they'll put advertisements on in other countries. Yeah, I know, I know that. But what so I'm it's just... kind of set up. They set I up just think it's a great already. shame. I think it's like I like I like BBC Radio. I used to listen to Radio One until uh, Moyles left, and now I listen to Radio Two with Chris Evans in the morning and stuff. And I like the fact that it's not commercial radio and there's no adverts on it. If I get in the office and they put commercial radio on, the adverts do my head in within about an hour. It's the same yeah. repetitive PPI adverts all the time. It's just PPI, PPI. But but, it's but the thing is, they actually mad. you're saying there's not like commercial it's not commercial radio. But a lot of these radio stations, for example, Radio One, they have to play certain certain songs a certain number of times a day. So whether yeah. whether uh, that's the problem with that. that they, whether, they, they kill it with you, you don't realize songs. it, but they're actually it's like. It's like saying that this this podcast isn't sponsored, and then all of a sudden I go, "Mmm, Coca Cola," like that. And, you know, ah, uh, yeah, I know. You know, it, it, has, it has actually been they're actually generating money from music companies paying them to say play their song so many times a day, and they have to play it like a minimum number yeah, of times. Yeah, no, I get that. I just I just like the fact <clears> that the adverts do drive me mad. But I know what you're saying. They're, they are the playlists are terrible because Radio Two is not as bad. Radio Radio One's awful for. I mean, you'll get the same song one every three hours in Radio 1 if it's popular. Yeah, yeah. Starts. You don't get that in Radio 2, which is better, but it's, I don't know. I, I, I think, I, for me, though, I think it, whether you like it or not, it comes down to there's no option. It should be an opt-in. You shouldn't should have, be. There, there, isn't even an op there isn't even an option to opt out. You're paying, and if you don't, we take it, we'll, put you, we'll charge you up to a thousand pounds and perhaps even go, yeah, no. go it's, to it's, jail. Wrong. So I'll it's a very what, outdated system, because when you think one, about... Sorry. No, on you go. I was just going to say, but you can say what you want. I see their Olympics coverage. It was unbelievable. Anybody that's yeah, new yeah. over the, the summer there would know the Olympics coverage was outstanding. Every channel in HD, they'd like yeah. 30, 34 channels or something they'd set up, and uh, you could basically go in and watch anything live. It was absolutely brilliant. I've got, there's one thing I take my hat off to them. They made a great job of it, and they did the good. But it's one of them things that will have to change because everything has to change and everything has to get more and more. It's, very, it's, it's very outdated, though, because I think well, primarily the license was set up. When was it? The thirties or forties or fifties? I can't remember yeah, when. Whatever it was. But no, it, it was actually it was um, they actually charged people for the radio first. I it think, was radio, and then, yeah, it was. and then what they did was, I think it was in the seventies. Ninety percent of the population in the nineteen seventies in the UK had a television, so they just said, right, radio's free. We'll charge for televisions, and that's how yeah. the radio was part of it. But it's 
the reason is, is basically comes down to the way people consume information. If I didn't have YouTube and news websites and all this, I'd probably watch television a lot more. Yeah. But I, I, I consume information in different ways, bec probably because I'm, I work on the internet. And But I'd, I'm always sitting at the computer. I never go and sit and relax on the couch and watch television. I've always got a laptop or a computer in front of me. We've got, seven, we've got seven TVs in this house and there's only two of us in it. That is ridiculous. I just thought seven? about that. I just thought about that there. There's a couple of wee portables that don't really get used much. There's one in the back room where we've got a treadmill. And there's one in the spare room up the stairs for if MD's staying. But I have got seven TVs. That's quite bad. There's two in my house back, but one of them in the living room. Then my well, we've, roommate, got, we've, got this, we've got this wee sitting room, and then we've got the love, main living room. And then I built a wee shelf in the kitchen and put a TV in there for when I'm eating my dinner. And then we've got one in the bedroom up the stairs, and then the other two I told you about. It's just ridiculous. I'm going to I'm going to buy one when I'm back just for that. I've got a gym out the back. I'm going to add the TV there. But apart from that, that's really just for putting DVDs and music on. I ah, see. I've got my back rooms made, and I've got like a treadmill and stuff in there, so we put a TV in there as well. It's crazy. Anyway, yeah. Well, um, we've, I've I'm kind of you've sort of my pet hates pet hates. I've kind of went off a little bit off topic, but the yeah. other thing that we touched about at the very start you were talking about was the discussion forum. Now. Yeah. What are you, what what are your um, your plans for the discussion forum? Now, obviously, you're going to have to upgrade. I know. I don't know what I don't know what to do. I, I would like your advice on this because you've got more more um, experience in it. I mean, we can't continue with the V bulletin thing because I mean, I'm 150 to 100 people a day. I'm having to try and delete, and I'm catching up. Good members are getting caught in the deleting process to try and delete these spammers. See if we were to move to like your one of your other um, forum softwares, we'd have they need to re-register and we need to start again, basically. Yeah. No, no. You can transfer all all the um, all the modern discussion forum softwares have have um, importers that can import all the posts and threads. There's some things that aren't cool. imported, but yeah. But if we could do that, I'd be happy. Though I don't care if we lose some of it because at the end of the day. Some of it's really old, and there was a gap there about two years where nothing was posted. Um, yeah. That I've removed. Before, everything the, before the spanners spam. arrived. Well, yeah, it was, I the... removed 20,000 20, users and 20,000 20, threads I, I, I pruned off. So uh, it's back to that there's a gap for about 2010 to about 2012 or something like that, or 2013. So it's, mm. um, it's, it's, it's a big gap in there. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't care if we lost some as we moved over, but if I could take the. No, the you, you won't lose any. Off. You won't lose any. The, um, to give people a bit, a bit of a history of it, for for at least ten years, VBulletin was the number one forum software. Now it's kind of over the last few years, it's kind of lost. I mean, it's still the most popular and probably still the most profitable forum software. But there's um, the other ones, like Zen Forum, which is X E N F O R O, Xenforo dot com, and the other one is what do you call it? Envision Board. No, those for the for the commercial. Uh, for, for software, that's the top three. There's 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 three um, ones as well, like phpbb.com, and there's a few other ones. But and what actually happened, and this is actually quite relevant because uh, there's been an update, and what's happened. Um, effectively, what happened was um, the guys who started V Bullet and ran it for like s several years. They they were bought over by a company called Internet Brands, which is a huge company. They own lots of different websites and applications, and they basically made a lot of changes. And the guys who ran it were, were not happy. That they come in and they said, "Right, we're going to have to start from scratch to make this better, to make the platform better. It's going to take two years or three years, but it's going to be perfect when you get it." And they come in and said, "No, nah, we need it in six months. You need to do this. You need to do that." And there was lots of arguments about it, but effectively. All the guys who started VBulletin and made VBulletin as great as it was left, and they were forced out, and they started their own forum software called Zenforo. Now, since the, the second, like the day before they launched, Internet Brands launched a huge lawsuit against them, like two years ago, and it's crippled the f software in a way because the guys have spent their whole time flying to America and going to all these court cases. And I, th I mean, I think the whole reason Internet Brands did this was to hold them back. Now, what's happened is there's been an update recently, and Xen Forum has actually won the court case. So cool. that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So I mean, because I, I've been using Zen Forum for like a year or so, and 
there's not been any major updates really. It's been it's kind of they've got all these things planned for it, but they've not they've not been able to do it because of the court case. The, the, I mean, the guys who should be sitting there developing the forum software and making them better are stuck in court cases and talking to lawyers yeah. all day, which is probably because Internet Brands is a huge company. They can just hire a couple of lawyers and then they can keep updating yeah. theirs. Um, but Zen Foro is, is, in my opinion, still one of the best, or arguably the best. It's it's a discussion, um, it's discussion software that can. It's, it's it's everything happens in real time. For example, like when you add a post, the page you know in V Bulletin where it goes to a, a page in the middle saying the thread's been updated. Yeah. They they use I don't know if it's jQuery or I can't or JavaScript, but it basically it just uploads to the page automatically. The page doesn't have to be refreshed. Yeah. So it's really it's really quick and it's got all this social media integration and it's really user friendly. Um What what kind of costs involved in moving to something like that? Is it expensive? No, well I mean I think it's I'll need to, in fact I'll go and check the website to I don't want to give out false false information on, on the podcast. Yeah. Um I'll do that, I'll just a license is a hundred and four one hundred and forty dollars. So you pay hundred and forty dollars and then I believe it's yeah, after the hundred forty dollars every year, it's forty dollars for support and updates. Cool. So it's quite affordable. Oh, like oh, people shit. like myself, people like myself, who I mean, I, I supported. I was like I was saying earlier, I was an ambassador, of, ambassador of eBuild, and I, I I had four or five licenses. I ran all my discussion forums using it. And then what it was was you bought a license for say one hundred fifty dollars or one hundred seventy five dollars, and then every year you paid I think it was forty dollars as well to update and get new updates. When this new company came in, they basically screwed over everyone and said, "Not your existing license means nothing. You have to buy a new license. It's three hundred, four hundred dollars." Whoa! And yeah, and instead of starting from scratch, they they kind of went. They just built on the existing platform, and it's all bloated. Now they've got a new uh, they've got a new version of it, and it's it looks good, but um. I don't know. I just I, I don't want to ever use that company again because yeah, of how much no, they screwed me over. I, I you know, they, they should they, sh- they should have honoured. And the guys that run Xen4 are really nice guys, and they seem to have a good, a good good view, a good ethical view on how they should look after customers. It's basically, it's it's the way they looked after customers before they sold the company. Yeah, and I mean it's not it's not an unusual thing to see that <laughs> happening when a a big company comes in and takes over something like that that has been good, and then they kind of destroy it with a sort of Billy boy ways of doing things, but yeah, I, mean, I think that's what we should do. Is we should look to move over to Zen Foro on our well, forum. What, what, what I'll do is I'll make you an admin of one of my discussion forums, and just yeah. you can actually you can actually get a test online and mess about with if you really want to try different things. But if you just want to actually see the admin area, I can make you an admin. It's it's good. It's, it's I'm really hoping for some big changes now that the, the court case is over. I'm hoping because they've got lots yeah. of different things they want to add and make it better. It's been, no, I mean, uh, we need to get something more up to date anyway that can deal with all this sort of spam problem anyway, because it is a, it is a total it, nightmare. It, it's, it's something that every single uh, forum script has to deal with. It's just these guys, they get, it's, it's just amazing how good these guys are that run the, the spam know. software. You know, it's, it's it, like sometimes they'll do an update and then like three weeks later, they've got they've broke the they've broke the script and they'll be able to access it and you know and yeah, it's so annoying but I suppose that's that's just eternal battle into with these I don't well, you, I don't know they don't achieve anything yeah. because what did nobody sees their, their post on a forum and go, Oh I think I'll go and buy that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's more about it's more about searches and traffic and just getting people to randomly click it and yeah. it's I mean if they can update a hundred thousand websites with a click of a button and get a thousand visits then they'll do it. You know? Yeah, even know. if it's but they must be making money somehow, somehow if they're doing it. Yeah. But uh, it's, I think uh, like the problem is though, the more hoops you make people jump through, the less user friendly. You know, you can actually lose a lot of people from signing up because the the registration process is such a pain in the ass. Well, that that's what I'm conscious of. And I don't <laughs> want to. We've kind of got a lot of good feeling going on at the moment. A lot of people um, enjoying coming on to it and joining us and stuff like that. And I don't want to lose that because it is difficult to sign up or because we are missing some guys. I mean, there was a guy signed up, and then I accidentally deleted him when I was deleting some some spammers. And he kind of messaged me, and he's like, "I can't go in at all," and I had to go and set him up again and stuff. So, yeah, uh, you just want to avoid that if we can. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't take. If someone emails you, you can you can fix that. Um, yeah. What what really annoys me? Here's a problem. I've run forums off here. I mean, if you've got a discussion forum, it literally takes what. A minute to go and type someone's username into the 
the um, the admin area, get their profile, and make a small change. Yeah. And I've I've been in members of forums before, and I've said, listen, can you change this part of my username, or can you change this? I can't change it myself. And they went, nah. <laughs> oh, I know that's crazy. You're like, come on! I'm, it takes you two seconds to fix this. I know. It's, it's it's like I don't know. Again, it's it's crazy with things like that. I mean, that should be stuff that they're doing. That's one thing that's good on Celtic Minded, which is that other form I use. I mean, that is still on an old version of eBullet at the moment, but the admin are really helpful on there. And you want done, you can get it done pretty quickly. That's good. There's so actually a lot of forums that they'll do. Is they'll charge five dollars or ten dollars to to change your username. I still, unless I, I, I can maybe see the, the the point of it of if if you've got a forum that's you know hundreds of thousands of people every month. Yeah. Where it's so busy, where you just you're overwhelmed. So to discourage people from it, you'll say, right, you have to you have to pay. pay for it. Yeah, I suppose. So is, do you think that's what you're going to do? You're going to go for the? Yeah, I think that. that try, try, I think you should try something. I definitely think I'm going to speak. Stadium. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll give that a shot. I mean, that's the one that you kind of re recommended to me before, and I haven't had a chance to look at it, to be honest. I've had a lot going on, but mm -hmm. um, maybe next time, if you get me back on again, I can talk about another project I've got going on at the moment. <laughs> um, it's another internet project that's more a business-focused project that I've got going on at the moment. But You'll, you'll be... Sup is it something you can talk about, or is that something for another day? It's something for another day. It's something that I'm, I've got a guy, a web designer, building a website for me at the moment. It's um, oh, I think you touched upon. So, is this the thing with um, yeah? It's to do with motors, so the motorbike industry and stuff like that. So it's we'll not go too much into it at the moment, but hopefully next time when I come back on, the, the site will be live and I'll be able to discuss a wee bit more about it. And fingers crossed, it'll be actually pulling in some people. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, that's good. Um, we may tie this up then because I think that was everything I wanted. Yeah, so just just remind everyone again, what what was the, the website's basesloaded.eu. Yep. Everything's on there actually. If you go to the landing page, you know, you can find the podcast, you can find the forum, the blog. So there's link there's links to Spreaker, there's links to yeah. your Twitter and Facebook pages. Yeah, everything's on there, the social media. It's basically it's a hub where you can find everything. So So if there's yeah. anyone out, if there's anyone watching this or listening to this who likes baseball, then I recommend checking it out. I I think this is something that even Americans who watch uh, who who watch baseball would probably be quite interested in. Well, one of the good things is that there's there's two of the American guys that do uh, Mets boys, Frankie and Nicky, two guys I'm quite friendly with. I met them when I was over in New York last week for a pint and stuff like that, and um, both of them want to do a special with us. So there will be some um, some content from America coming in. Eight guys that are really really knowledgeable about the sport who will probably give us a bit of a hand because we are. We are kind of learning the sport. I would say I've got a decent knowledge of the game. Well, decent knowledge of my team more than the game, but um, yeah. we are learning the sport. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this was to expand my knowledge. So if anybody wants to come on who's got a great knowledge of the sport, we would love to hear from them um, to to get there. And, you know, just if, if they feel that like they want to share, if they're passionate about their sport and want some British, Irish people to learn about it, then come on and we would love to, to discuss it with you. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there is. I mean, it, it, there's probably a lot of people listening to this who, who watch baseball on a regular basis and probably get a season ticket to their favourite team. Yeah, I mean, the guys, the guys with season tickets, it's serious stuff, you know, they've got 86 home games or something a season. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of times there's two games in a day, isn't there? There is, there's times that they play day and night, aye. It's, there's, mm. there's no that's season long, baseball it's a, like. It's, <laughs> it's a long it's, day. Uh, uh, they earn their crust, I mean, don't be wrong, some of them are well paid. But uh, when you look at the, the NFL is where the, the big money's at, they play something like 16 games a season or something like that, and they get paid stupid amounts of money. Yeah, but but the problem is everyone gets brain damage afterwards. <laughs> there's 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 pros and cons. You know, everyone's uh, there's actually there's more people getting brain damage in in the NFL now than there is in boxing or M, like MMA, MMA or res, even wrestling. There's more people yeah. in the NFL. It's, it's just all the the big guys bashing their heads in each other, it's just... Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's something... I, I would... Uh, it's, I, that, that would worry me. That's something I, I never want to have a problem with when you're older, you know, see... Uh, the, I don't know if you, like, I don't know, I don't have many examples. There's been quite a few no, news stories about the American footballers who've, um, who've committed suicide, and they've just had problems with the brain. It, it's, it's, a, it's a real shame, like, see, when you think uh, about it's, it. It's, like... The the I mean the famous case was obviously the one with Chris Benoit from the the wrestling. 
Yeah. And uh, I used to remember watching him. And I mean, I wasn't a huge fan of wrestling, but I watched it every now and then. He was uh, he was a, a wrestler I liked, but what he did was terrible. Like for those who don't know, he basically murdered his wife and his kid, and it was horrible. I, I, but at the same time, I think I don't know. There's a part of me that thinks that he should have got a little bit more sympathy from people as well because he was a sick, sick man. They found yeah. that they found that um, his brain when they did the autopsy, he was I think he was what forty or something or thirty. I don't, I don't know the exact age, but his brain was like an eighty-six year old man with Jesus with Alzheimer's, like an an eighty-six year old yeah. man with Alzheimer's. He couldn't remember stuff. His brain was all just. Pure damage because of the abuse his body had taken up, and it's t- it's abs- I mean, I'm not saying anyone should have sympathy for him, but it's it's per se. But yeah, it, there are, there is a, there is reasons behind why. Yeah, there is reasons, yeah. but I, I think it's it's just it's something I think they need to address in wrestling and football. But I think yeah. I think the biggest worry in the, in baseball is is getting hit by the baseball itself. <laughs> well, well, there is some serious, there is some injuries happen, but I, it's like um, my team particularly we had took. One guy pitcher last year got hit by a line drive, but broke his leg and things like that. You know, it, it does happen, but it's 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 not the worst sport. I mean, it's it's it is the, a contact it is a contact sport, so it's not. Yeah. People think it's it's rounders, and it's not. There is a lot of contact involved in it, and it's it can be painful, but it's, it's certainly not what anywhere near as dodgy as hockey or football. Yeah, hockey's. I mean, I think they're trying to stop the the boxing and the hockey too. Oh, but what was the point watching? It? Yeah, I know. What was the? When did this happen? This was a few years ago. But can you remember when one of the fans, like obviously in baseball, people can lean in and catch the ball? Just a chair remember? thing. No, it was there was a, a guy or a girl, and basically it was in, I think it was in the World Series, and oh, the ball was uh, coming down, and they leaned over and caught the ball because obviously you're in the crowd, you caught the ball. But what they did was put their team out. Uh, they robbed their own team. I, I can't remember who that was. But for some reason, I, I was the funniest. I, I mean, I can't think I of don't any. I think it was sport. the Red Sox. Was it the Red Sox? But as like, I can, the guy, there any other, there's no other sports spectators can affect the outcome of the game. I can't think of any other sport where someone in the crowd can hurt the team in any way. It's a. Uh, you know, it it's, it's, it's not my room. It's actually the, the screen. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> the I. It, they, they, that person had actually, uh, I think they had to move or something like that because there was like death threats out against them and all this kind of crazy stuff. But was, I, there was, I thought was you were talking, there was, there was a situation a few years ago as well where, I don't know what happened, a fan must have been getting some guy abuse but that was, was either warming up on deck or he was in the third base or something like that. And he picked up a, there was a bit of rock started and he picked up a chair and had the fan there, like a folding chair. <laughs> So like an Eric, <laughs> Eric Cantona type thing? Where they just... it, was, it was just crazy. I don't, I don't know why he'd done it and I have no idea what was going on. The thing with American sports that I quite like is that they don't, they've got quite a, a liberal attitude towards a, a good fight. Yeah, you yeah. You know, in baseball you've got a bench he's clearing the fight and if they run on they'll punch each other. Yeah, that's the best thing about baseball when there's like 30 <laughs> people just <laughs> punching, great. punching crap at each other. Uh, and you've got, you've got a three, you maybe got a three game ban or something like that and a bit of a fine but there's not all this drama there is if it happens in soccer over here or anything like that so it's, I no, quite like fo- that fo- side of it. Like, when you think about I mean, the majority of footballers, even the ones that are apparently tough guys, they're, they're pussies really. I mean, you're a tough guy and a guy and then they won't even be touched and they're down holding their leg and it's like, get fucking up. Do you know what I, mean? it's I know, like, it's like man up and go on. Yeah, it. I mean, it's like, and then you've got guys that go in and do boxing or judo or kickboxing every week and they get the crap punched out of them and they're smiling, you know. I, and these I guys, it's the same in rugby, you know, the rugby guys That's are getting bashed crazy. about and they're all smiling. Big guy said that to me in New York in 2003 when we were over. He says, uh, oh, these American footballers and hockey players are pussies. Rugby, that's a real sport. <laughs> he uh, says, they, I, guys, they guys don't wear any padding, they just go for it. There's a lot of, I, I mean, it's, rugby's not a sport I know much about, but I know there's a lot of, kind of guys grabbing balls. And fucking just, yeah, it's just egg chasing, isn't it, though? But yeah. It's like, but uh, it's, it's, it's not a sport I want to play. I quite like my ears the way they are. Yeah. I don't blame you. Well, we'll maybe tie this up then. Um, yeah, cool. At, so, for everyone listening, basesloaded.eu, and thanks for watching and YouTube and listening to this. This the the show is going to be. Um, I just saw a message for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't notice that. Um, there's a the show is going to be kind of irregular. I've got another guest that could be at either tonight or tomorrow, 
and I'll put I'll probably upload it a different day. But if you go to kevmodun.com, I'll I'll post information about this when it goes online, and you you'll see how you can subscribe to iTunes. Um, and if you want to subscribe to Kevin's podcast, just go to basesloaded.eu, and you'll see a link at the top that says podcast. And when you click on that, there's a link to Spreaker, where you can click on. Does it? Does it, it automatically? It seems to automatically show the latest episode. Is that correct? It automatically does, but uh, if you click on to where it says "bases loaded episode" on there, yeah, it'll actually take that. you onto the page on Spreaker.com. You can find us if you're if you're a, a, a member on Spreaker, you can follow us on there as well. If you go into Spreaker.com, search bases, "bases loaded," you'll find the show on there, and you can just um, you can follow us, and you'll get the updates when the new shows arrive and stuff. And we're also on iTunes for auto download if you want to subscribe. Yeah, I think I think iTunes is the easiest way for everyone to. Sub- to follow bot, uh, podcasts, isn't it? It's just if you're on Apple, it is it's good. Yeah. How do, how does it work with Android? Are you uploaded anywhere for that? Well, you just go into if you go into Spreaker.com, you just get a direct link and it downloads straight on the Android. That's good, and and they can follow it in the browser too. Yeah, and you can also play. You can play direct from your browser, but it's easier if you had to download it. Downloads onto your onto your um, SD card, and then you can play it anywhere. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, thanks for thanks for uh, stopping by today, Kevin, and we'll we'll try and get you on another another day. No problem. Because I, th- I think I think. Sorry, yeah, it's the first episode. to be number one, aye? Yeah, the first <laughs> episode. It's um, we we'll need to get the yellow little trophy or a medal or something. Um, yeah. no, it, it's good because it'd be good to get you on another time though, because I think it will be interesting to see maybe in a month or two how how the forum's developing, how the podcast is developing, and just see how and, and if you're doing your social media your, and stuff. And yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something you need. To, I mean, there's it's something you we can touch upon the next time because obviously social media is a big thing. Where even if you yeah. don't like Twitter and stuff, it's it's something you kind of have to do now, isn't it? If you no, want to promote I mean, it, it's such a useful tool. I mean, for for getting your your name out there. But yeah, I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed. In a month's time, that new website will be live as well, which is um, more business focused rather than recreation. That's hopefully going to build a, a career for me. Um, so that'll be something a bit totally different to talk about as well as talking about the bases loaded stuff. It should yeah, be live then. So to, it'd be good to see you having a career online to make money through yeah. the internet because you're, you're someone who obviously you're quite internet savvy and you know. Yeah. I mean, you know pretty much uh, quite a lot of stuff that you do need to do on the internet. You're quite. I mean, you've always got gadgets and you know, yeah, like yeah, iPhones no, know. and iPads and stuff. I you know, you're spend always working a lot of time online. On it. You know, I, I do, I do do a lot of stuff online, and I, I think this idea I've got rock solid, and I think it's something that's something using my contacts and the motorbike trade that I've spent a lot of years building up. Um, f- for um, my own good rather than for my companies that I work for is good for one so um, I, I'll, I'll be able to talk about it a bit more then when the site's live and stuff like that and hopefully hopefully it'll be ready within the guy who's writing three to four weeks so hopefully next time I, I catch up with you um, I can talk about it and we can have a look at it and see what it's like mm, Sounds good Kev, sounds good Brilliant. Well thanks, thanks again and we'll see you all next time um, I think my next guest I've got a few guys lined up for you um, but I think the next one will be Sachin Kona is my friend from England. He's a photographer. I'll be quite interesting because I have known nothing about photography, so it's 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 something I've actually got an appreciation of though because it's it's an art form really, isn't it? See when you see how how good these guys are to get photos. It's not until you get a camera yourself that you realise how difficult it is. It's so hard. And see, there's a, a great person on Twitter called Fascinating Pictures. You need okay. to follow him on Twitter. Honestly, some of the photos that get posted are absolutely phenomenal. Um, you can't find, I actually should probably just have a wee quick look on me and see if I can get you the get you the. So it at, f- send send right. me a tweet. Send me a tweet to K- at Kevin Modin and I'll. Ah, fascinating. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. It's honestly they, they just they just post every day. They post up some some really stunning pictures and they're random. You know, sometimes it's pictures of wildlife. Sometimes it's just cool. But it's just one of them ones on Twitter that's worth having a wee look at every day. Puts a oh, smile on your face. Good. Yeah, there's loads of kind of animal and kind of nature related ones. Oh, and there's just some of them. There's like sometimes they'll show you like really cool, like hotels and stuff like that. And then there's like there was some of the. It's just it's various and random stuff, but it's always something that's worth having a wee look at. Mm. But, hey, yeah, I, I look, for, look forward to seeing the one with your photographer, mate. Yeah, it's good. Uh, uh, Sessions, a great guy, top guy, man. He's he's actually living in Vancouver now. He's from London, but he's, he's he lives in Vancouver now. So it'll be interesting to see why he went, went over there. And like when I, I first met him ten years ago, I didn't even know. I don't even know if he did photography there or not. You know, so yeah. it's gonna be interesting to see what he's doing. But sure. well, thanks again, and until next time, people will subscribe. Just ch- check out kevinmuldoon.com, 
I'll, I'll put a link on the top of the page for podcasts, and I'll, I'll show you how you can subscribe to iTunes. I do. Thanks again, Kevin. Best of luck over the next few weeks. The base is loaded. It's, yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting. It would be good to see how, how many more followers you get on iTunes and Spreaker. Brilliant. Thanks, Kev. Cheers. No problem. Thanks, everyone. Bye.